baseball is dead. Rest in peace. Uh, it's a rainy day here in Boston. In case you're going to get out in day? front of that. Yeah, rainy day. I had to go outside in the rain today to get my coffee. Very wet. Wow. Very wet. Jake, can you do me a favor? Can you open your blinds? I want to see the rain. I haven't seen the rain in God knows how long. Is it I raining in your neck know. of the woods? I'd like to see a little Have drizzle. Have you ever seen the rain? CCR, one nothing me. Yeah. It's a great song. It's a great it's a song. Phenomenal song. It's a, it's a great song. song. Oh, boy, Jake. You lift that window, buddy. You got this. What a view. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. Can you see it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got a much better sense for it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Joey's <laughs> jealous. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, a great shit, Jake. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, mm, uh. I wanted to address something. Um, okay. The the baseball movie discussion that we had last week when I was like, there aren't any good yeah. modern baseball movies. Someone tweeted me today yeah, and they were so, like, it was, it was like, I love listening to Dallas shut Jared up and listen to all these movies. Like all those movies were made in the 90s or, or, or earlier. And then well, hold on, hold on, hold on. So hold I, on. let me just clarify. Let me clarify. Let me clarify what I what now I you're said. You're bitching about the date that they're made. Like first it was there was I, no quality my movies. Whole, I threw no, out no, 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 no. I said modern baseball movies. That means made recently. What? And there hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We also left at people like, oh, how did you guys not bring up Forty Two? Forty Two is a great baseball movie that was made recently. But when I say modern, like I want it to be made recently about baseball recently. Dallas is like, what about Eight Men Out? That movie's about the fucking 1919 no. No. fucking White Sox. Because you wanted dark. You wanted dark. So I gave I you, want, I gave I you want, Eight Men like, Out. I gave I want you a movie about baseball like players the steroid with era. The mafia, and that wasn't dark enough for you. Give Apparently me, you want give me a movie about the steroid era. Give me a movie about murder, smuggling like, Cuban baseball players to America. Give me something. Give me something okay. that's modern. I want. I don't want to hear about fucking shoeless Joe Jackson and all this bullshit. Because because you don't have a love for the real for government history. names. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. No, I do. Oh, yeah. Real government names. Real says government the guy names. Who wants Cuban smugglers? <laughs> <laughs> give me, give me all the Cuban smugglers. Yeah, but it's not like, like no. Yeah, how'd you, how'd you get? There. How'd you get to America? Oh, fucking uh, Sammy submarines brought me over here. <laughs> Yeah, well, those real government names, though, yeah. right, Jared? That's what we're That's after. what I want. I don't think Sammy Subs is on the fucking birth certificate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So someone get to it. We don't have enough, like, you would think that there would be more baseball movies because if the average age of a baseball fan is, like, fucking 50-something years old, 60-something years old, who has all the money? It's the old. It's the old people. You know, here's the problem. Go make some fucking baseball Here, movies, you old fucks. Here's, here's the problem. There's nobody young in Hollywood acting right now that's athletic enough. That's my theory mm. to be able to go out and do what Kevin Costner did. Because there's yeah. nobody. I promise you. There's Chris no Hemsworth. You don't think he could throw a fastball? One guy. Fuck no. Are you kidding me? You don't think there's one guy that played like Jared, through news, high school? Jared, newsflash. Newsflash, Jared. The, the hammer in all his movies is not really that heavy. Like he does, he can, but he's he jacked, can dude. It's, yeah, I know. I get Have it, you seen his, like that, he has a workout a app. Have you seen it? No, uh, no, I don't know what it's no. called, but he's got one. Yeah, you're a liar. You're a liar. That's, I don't know what it's Monday, called. That's your Monday, Wednesday, right, Friday. No, to don't fuck. That's not enough for it. Does money yeah. ball not count as modern to you? No, it does. No, that's like the one. That's the and, one and, video that scratches my itch and people and still ruin it for me because they're like, oh, well, well in fairness, they're right. Yeah, don't, don't, don't. They're don't right. Bitch a, thank you. You can't make a movie about the 2002 Oakland A's and be like, yeah, I no mention of Barry Zito, Tim Hudson or Mark Mulder, that, like Miguel that's Tejada. Like talk, that's like talking about like, hey, you know what? Let's make a fucking great football movie about a historical franchise that made a massive impact. Let's do it about the Green Bay Packers and just <laughs> no mention of Vince Lombardi. It's, it's you know like it's like do doing follow a, it up. It's like doing a movie about the Yankees dynasty in the 90s and having it center around Shane Spencer <laughs> <laughs> and Scott Brocious. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's like, damn, these guys are fucking <laughs> Charlie out of control. Hayes, Scott Brocious, <laughs> and Shane Spencer. Yeah. We all knew the core. <laughs> yeah. Hideki Arabu took us to the promised land. God rest his that, soul. That is, that is legitimately what that's like. Mm-hmm. And that's an embarrassment mm-hmm. that... Like, but but I blame I blame the unathletic actors. There's uh, <clears throat> there's there's one there's one actor, and I mean, uh, uh no, maybe there's not. <laughs> Who are you thinking of? Maybe, maybe maybe there's maybe there's not. Who I don't I I don't know. Who looks I, I like they could to, throw a baseball? That's what I was trying to think. Like. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I don't even want to throw Tom Cruise's name out. There. No, dude, what? No, old. no, I, no. I, I was thinking because he does all his own stunts still. Yeah, but he can't. Like, that, like th- there's there's something genetically on, within great, like, you. Like people, many people forget that uh that a few good men. Yeah, is a baseball movie. You can't. Here's the thing: as an adult, you can't learn how to throw a baseball. Like that no. is just genetically in you, or it's not. If you are 31 years old and you've been given the role of a baseball player, you can, th- there's not enough time for you to learn how to throw a baseball and look like you've done that your whole life. You can't. No. You're gonna be Same thing with swinging a bat. You can't do it. Like Either you can do it or you can't. And you learned how to do that at a very young age. And it's just been inside of you. Well, have you ever seen those videos of that, like, what is that movie called? That kid, the big league kid who, like, broke his arm and then started throwing gas or something? What, Rookie of the Year? Rookie of the Year. you ever seen the videos of that kid trying to fucking play baseball? Kid sucked. <laughs> oh, he did actor? suck. You mean- yeah. <laughs> yeah. He pulled um, it off. You don't really have to be that good, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Little Big League? Yeah. CGI. Maybe, maybe, maybe that kid, the, the mm. kid who... Kid who ended up owning the twins. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you can't do it. Hollywood. I blame Hollywood. Hollywood can't produce an actor that is athletic enough to look like. That. I mean, look, well, dude, baseball. I'll do it. Baseball takes a lot of time and practice. And if they were in fucking right. drama class, you're not. You're not in the cage. <laughs> I'll do it, and I'll give them a great rate. You disagree with that take, Joe? No, I was agreeing with you. Oh, okay. I mean, um, if you want to see an interesting baseball story, mm-hmm. uh, oh, that one story about that movie about those guys from India, they oh, had yeah. a game show in India, and it was like, who in India? There's like a billion people in India. One of these guys has to throw a 90 mile per hour fastball, even though none of them know. Oh, how to million play dollar arm, million yeah, dollar so arm. They got, they got like three of them. Try yeah, there, uh, the and shout out the Pittsburgh Pirates is who. Signed them, believe that. Oh, raise it. Mm-hmm. Raise him. That's a crazy story, dude, because one of those guys is actually pretty good and he had pretty good numbers. Fucking double A, I but believe. He quit. Got, I, I think he got to double A. Mm hmm. And he had like, you know, three something ERA. He mm-hmm. got injured or whatever. Now this fucking guy's in Jared's world. He's in WWE body slamming people. What? Really? Yes, I don't remember his what name. What a fucking transition. Are you Rip. kidding me? You go from India. How about that? How about coming from India mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. coming over here and playing minor league baseball? And you're like, that's fucking terrible. I can't live like that. I need to go <laughs> do something else. I'm going to the fucking WWE. I mean, that's <clears throat> Randy Macho Man Savage my, minus the India part. <laughs> right. Well, that's what I'm. <laughs> I mean. I mean, coming from India is like different right, in India. It, it's a long plane ride. But is that really that cool? What no, I I'm saying the things that they're probably dealing with, and I'm I'm saying this because Is India bad? If you remember. Yeah. Uh, th- th- it's it's not uh Jared, as far as infrastructure goes, they do not benefit from some of the things that we benefit from, like sewage and running <laughs> water. Shit and, in a I mean, bucket. Not the whole country. Don't not- tell me there's way worse countries out there that got it way worse. Shit in a bucket, throw <laughs> a heater, and, and body slam some people. Like that's that's no. the American dream. I, I I don't know. I think you're 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 maybe mixing the dreams and continents and things. And, yeah, I don't know how many kids. I'm I'm not saying there are no kids 
mm-hmm. in Kentucky that aren't shitting in buckets <laughs> that do wish to get to the big leagues. I'm not saying that that's the case. Yeah. I'm saying you're far more likely to run into that in some of the more downtrodden areas in India mm-hmm. than I think you are here in Kentucky. Got it. Or wherever. No, sorry for the strays, Kentucky. But <laughs> Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a large contingency of baseball's dead listeners in Kentucky and they're like, Dallas, you're supposed to have our back here and you failed us. <laughs> I do. My bad. My bad. Sorry. Yeah. It's just it's the first one that came to my <laughs> Speaking came speaking of mind. fucking idiots, uh the video of you as Freddie Mercury. I tw- I <laughs> well, tweeted that why out. That, why why do we what? No, no, no. I'm it's not that's just you projecting. I wasn't talking about you. Um <laughs> the the video of you uh dressed up as Freddie Mercury dancing around like an asshole. I tweeted that out in the caption I said, "What is wrong with this guy?" And the number of people that replied to the video being like, dude, fuck you. Like, leave him alone. Like, why don't you like talk, try to use your energy for more positive stuff? Like, what did that guy ever do to you? I'm like, what did that guy ever do to me? Where, how much time do you got? There is a, an abundance of people that were defending me as if I was just bullying some stranger. And, well, and I, I mean, stood my it, ground. I was like, listen, I, I have... Uh, a certificate to bully in this situation you, you, you should not you shouldn't be proud of i'm the, proud the hostility that you stirred up online i mean <laughs> i'm just i'm just trying to have a good time jared i'm just cheering from a ball club that's all mm-hmm. i'm doing just cheering from a ball club what was the score and like eight to two at that time you guys are losing? it was not good <laughs> <laughs> it was not good mm-hmm. <laughs> we uh but that's the best part is we were like you know what uh because they were asking me they're like do you still want to, cause it wasn't for like TV. It was right. for, you know, in-house entertainment and we just caught clip, you know, they just caught clips of it. Um, and it was a queen themed fireworks night. So they're playing queen music throughout the evening. And as you could hear, if you were watching the game, I was, you know, in the treehouse. So the DJ is spinning right next to me mm-hmm. and people like were blowing me up. Like, dude, like I can, all I hear is hyphy music and like, and a baseball game like this is fucking crazy i've never seen this shit before i'm like yeah well this is every night so just tune in um but i was like yeah fuck it let's keep doing it we're just gonna have fun so we <laughs> turned the dj down sang the seventh inning stretch and it's like right after the seventh inning stretch is when people were like all right we're out <laughs> and everybody <laughs> you could see people just like filtering out and i was like yeah no fuck it play the fucking track we're doing it so we uh we got we got the fan going, and uh, it was a good time. Yeah, that video yeah. did numbies. <laughs> my, uh, yeah, I, I, bro, my <laughs> wife and I were in fucking Target mm-hmm. that day, like shopping through the fucking women's section. I'm holding up pants. People are like, just fucking looking at us. Yeah, they're like because I could tell they're like like and and multiple people, multiple people wearing. A's gear walking through, like looking at me and like pointing at me, like not pointing, like laughing, but like pointing at me, like, hey, I know, you know, and they're putting it all together. Like, mm. what the fuck is going on right now? Why are you, did I just watch your wife hold up a pair of high waisted jeans to you, to your waist? You're like, what's your- what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, hey, I, I'm just waving, you know, like, no big deal. No, it must be deal. nice to be that secure. <clears throat> yeah fuck it it's yeah fuck yeah a lot of people a lot of people are probably envious of that yeah a lot of insecure people out there down. live that life live that life the life yeah but no. uh I, I i didn't want to bring it up but since you did jared yes the oakland a's did take two out of three from the seattle mariners mm. at home for the mm. first time in quite a while so yeah. thanks for bringing that up of course yeah there are a lot of important series that that happened over the weekend. Um, there were. You had there Braves, were. Astros. You had Blue Jays, Yankees. You had uh, White Sox, Guardians. There was a lot of. Uh, so I'm saying Red Sox, Orioles was very pivotal in the I, wild card <laughs> standings. A lot of people were saying that. A lot of people. I didn't say that. Yeah. A lot of people were saying that. Um, but we got to talk about those series because there was some uh, movement. There's some movement There's- in those series, um, divisional implications, wild card implications. But before we do that, college football is back. 
And it's time to enjoy the tradition, the fun, and the great offers from DraftKings Sportsbook. To celebrate the the best time of the year, right now, new customers can bet just $5 on any team and get $200 in free bets instantly, win or lose. Joey, do you have a... Do you have a, a college football team? Yeah, Virginia, the Virginia Tech Hokies. Oh, the Hokies. Oh, Do the Hokey Pokies around here, huh, Joe? Look at uh-huh. that. How's the season <laughs> looking? You guys going to be good or what? We're always good every year. Nah, every good. Yeah, that's good. Proud of you guys. That's not enough action. You can also place the same game parlay for a shot at an even bigger payout. Just combine multiple bets into one, like which team will get the win, which team will score first, and more. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. All you have to do is download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use the promo code JARED. That is J-A-R-E-D. Bet just $5 on college football and get $200 in free bets instantly. That is promo code JARED. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for terms and resources. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Tennessee, call or text the Tennessee red line at 1-800-889-9789. In New York, that number is 877-8467-369. One per new customer, minimum $5 deposit and wager $200 issued as eight $25 free bets. Um... All right. In terms of these uh, these big series that happened over the weekend, where do we start? Uh, before, I mean, I guess we can do like a little a little segue because there was an update on a, on one of the bigger stories from the last episode. That would be the um, Marcelo Zuna DUI arrest. The mm. police body cam footage came out, and yep. uh, it was interesting. Um, Marcel. At first, we noticed that he handed the officer. First, he tried to dap him up. <laughs> he was like, yeah. yeah. He's like, what's Yo. up? I'm Marcel Ozuna from the Braves. I'm Ozuna he, from yeah. the Braves. Ozuna from the Braves. And he was like, cool, cool, cool. And then he gave him his player card over his license. That didn't work. And then he was like, I'm sorry, my man. And tried to dap up the officer. Uh, still, those three measures that he he tried to exercise... Uh, we're not successful, and that's going to cost you a DUI. So is yeah, that is that pol- is that straight up policy for MLB players? Dallas, they tell you just give them your card. Can't hurt. Not, no, no. So yeah, don't give them your card. Maybe have your card out. Maybe have it <laughs> behind your driver's license. Maybe have it like you know if you were to. I don't have my wallet, but if you were to like splay here. Like, you know what I mean? Just like kind of butterfly it out. Like that's, here you go. But what's on top? Your driver's license. You're handing them your driver's license. And then if they see the card and they do whatever with that, hey, that's that's on them, right? But you're not handing them your card. You're just, oh, like, sorry. Like I pulled both of these IDs out at the same time. Here's you know, like, here's my driver's license. Not, yo, I'm fucking Osuna. Here's my fucking mm. player's card. Cashed in 10 this year. Let's go, baby. <laughs> you tickets? I get, you need tickets? Oh, you can't do that. That's he that should, would be he should, advice. Anytime you, if he's going to drive drunk, he should be driving with his World Series ring on. Just <laughs> hang that out the window and be like, oh, this old thing? Mm, they got that last year when I won the World Series with the Braves of Atlanta, where we are right now, <laughs> officer. Yep, and that's that was his biggest mistake. He's yeah, not having the ring on. Yeah, yeah, you gotta that's have the ring. Pretty much where he went wrong. That's why he got booed. <laughs> yeah, because of that. Yeah, <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> people are getting giving him shit for saying he's a Zuna from the Braves, but I've never seen a player get arrested on body cam and me- them not mention that they played baseball. Mm. Larusa, um, he said, "I'm a I Hall of Famer, said, brother. I'm a, I'm a baseball man." <laughs> <laughs> That's a direct quote. I'm a Hall of Famer, brother. <laughs> They're like, cool. Get in the fucking back of the cruiser, dude. <laughs> I hate to I hate to laugh. I'm not laughing. I just the fucking God damn. People give me That's shit weird. for some of the absurd things that I say. I have never, in the face of the law, uh, tried to third person or 
anything like that. Well, it's it's never it, it will never. I don't care who you are. I, it, and as you as evident, it never plays out well for you. I have no. been in that spot, and it, it like and cops and cops will fucking. I mean, dude, they got the power of the pin. They got they, everything. There's now that they wear body cams. Going, a lot of them wear body cams. Like they can't look the other way. It's like, oh, like you're telling me that. Oh, you're Ozuna from the Braves, and now I'm going to be on right. camera letting you go because of who you are. Like that's going to fall yeah. on me. Uh, yeah, who's going to look <clears throat> at the footage? If he never got arrested, no one would even look at the footage. Probably. I mean, Big like Brother is always uploaded. watching. Big Brother is always. It's not watching. being live streamed. <laughs> Yo, I mean, I like if it, watch- if it leaked, what if it leaked on Twitter, right? It leaks on Twitter. Ozuna uh, was like telling his boys that he got pulled over drunk and he got away with it. And then someone heard that and then it ends up on Reddit and then it ends up on Twitter. And then people are like, we got to ask the the police the station. Officer. Yeah, like like the officer that pulled him over. <clears throat> like, let's pull up that that footage. So let's see how drunk he was. He's like, oh, he was. You know, he wasn't like slurring his speech or anything, but he was obviously drunk enough to want to slide his player card in there and tell him that he was Ozuna from the Braves. Like that's that's, not, that's essentially like you're admitting guilt. If you're if you're sober and you're like, all right, yeah, like you you pulled me over for doing 65 and a 45. Like, all right, I'll get a speeding ticket. But if you're Ozuna from the Braves, then who gives a fuck about like a $200 ticket? You can pay that. You're fine. Like your insurance is going to go up. What do you fucking do? You just don't want to go to jail for D- DUI. Like you're already admitting you're you're guilty by doing that. Well, that's <clears throat> Jared. That's something that the police look for. That's something that the authorities look for, right? Mm-hmm. Is you know like an, an expansive story right out of the gate. You know, trying to run interference before the cop has asked any questions. You know, like how many times do you get pulled over and are like, "Hey, Mister or Officer, uh, well, I'm Dallas. I'm Jared. I'm Joey. How, how's it going?" You've never introduced yourself, have you? I mean, in knock on wood, I have not been pulled over in like 11 years. <clears throat> it's been a well, long I'm, time. So in any scenario, I just don't envision you introducing yourself to the like, stopping officer. Sub dog. I'm the I'm the yeah. Saugus rocket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you may yeah, have heard of me. Uh, I'm in many commercials. Uh, did you see the World <laughs> Series parade? I was in that. Uh, here's a picture of the World Series ring that I was given. Um, by the way, do you love first pitches? I did that. Yeah. Not only did I do it, I threw a perfect strike. You have a great night, <laughs> sir. Like, yeah. Yeah, step out of the fucking car. Like, I'm going to tase this guy just on principle. <laughs> yeah. So... So, yeah, Joey, to answer your question, it may have been a better look for Ozuna if he would have just had that player's card tucked behind his driver's license and maybe not put that on full display (laughs) and probably wouldn't have gone with the full introduction as well as my occupation. Yeah. There's also like the language barrier with those guys where like I'm sure that they don't feel super comfortable addressing a police officer who's uh who probably only speaks english and then you're going with a secondary language in a situation where if you say the wrong thing you're going to jail pretty much well and he's just trying like and and i do like i have a ton of ton of sympathy for for that very situation because yeah that's scary. he could be saying something tr- oh, fuck dude i couldn't i have been in that spot too where you are now in the back of a cop car in a foreign country and there's no like you're not speaking the language like <laughs> this is not going to work out no. there's going to have to be a moderator here <laughs> and that's a fucking scary scary spot to be in so i can only imagine like if i could use any of those words at that time i would have been using them but i don't speak fucking thai so i had nothing like absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. So if I could have reverted to like, if I could have just told you who I was as politely and as kindly as possible in that spot, I very well may have. Just fuck. Here's if what only, I got. If only the Ta- Taiwanese police knew that you threw a perfect game. <laughs> yeah, you would. <laughs> they would have been so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I'm that, Dallas Brandon. You don't know me. You don't know me, dude. Play for the Ace. Well, no, that's the thing is, it wasn't like that. Like you don't know me. He, he was just like identifying himself, like in a you know, like in a happy-go-lucky manner. Like, hey, it's me. It's your friend. What's up? No, you know, he wasn't like like he was just like, and I, that's what I mean. Like, I I can understand. I get and look. Let's not forget. 
you're intoxicated. So you're not, you know, yeah. maybe thinking that some things are going to fly right here when they <laughs> probably me. aren't going to fly. Did oh, you see uh, Ben Ingram? Ben Ingram on the Braves uh, radio guy when he uh, when Ozuna came to the plate, he said, and come to the plate, Ozuna from the Braves. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, no. Are you on the radio? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, who did that? A, the Braves radio call. announcer. What a call. No. What a call. <laughs> oh, you think gosh. they told him, like, hey, man, he probably shouldn't have said that. No, here is Ozuna no. from the Braves. <laughs> no, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with no, that. Here There's is nothing. Ozuna from the Braves. <laughs> oh, that is so money. That is so fucking money. <laughs> That is so funny. Oh, oh my god. Uh, I'm a, I'm also sorry, sorry. You're good. I'm off the board. North Cross police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm also in front of Grace. Sorry, my dog. <laughs> sorry, my dog. <laughs> yeah, man. He's like, he's like, hey, man. Like, come on, man. It's me, Osuna from the Braves. Like, and and that's what I mean is. In that, I can hear him like trying to convey, like, I fucking mean nobody harm. I, I like, like this. Look, look, man, I'm not here to hurt anybody. Like, I'm not. I can hear all of that in that. Zuna from so the like, like, well, <laughs> If he was trying to convey that message that he wasn't trying to hurt anyone, he probably should have pretended he wasn't Ozuna from the Braves, the guy who literally just got in trouble for domestic assault by the yeah, same police fair, department. Joe. That's that's fair. And so anything, really not only that, oh, Acuna, the yeah. he put out like a he put out like not like a statement, but um, some Instagram post where like uh, when that always irritates me when religious people hide behind religion when they they do dumb or stupid or illegal shit. Uh, but that's basically what Ozuna did. He posted. Um, with strength i will rise from all of this sometimes difficult situations come into your life so you ask yourself why me me again only these things happen to me god gives you only one answer because i know you are strong bro you beat the fucking shit out of your wife and then drove drunk (laughs) like you weren't randomly selected like you didn't get cancer like your fucking house didn't burn down accidentally you assaulted your wife and drove drunk yes Jared, this is God working in mysterious ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like there are a lot of unfortunate things to happen to people that don't deserve it. You did all of this to yourself. I, that is infuriating when, when people do that. Like, oh, man, God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers, huh? Another DUI, another arrest for something shitty that I did. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? <laughs> So you're not buying it. Here is Ozuna from the Braves. (laughs) (laughs) That is that's a tough angle to go by. It's not great. Why me? Why me, dude? I'm such a good guy. Oh fuck. Yeah, it's it's not a it's not a great it's not a great look. It, it really isn't. But, you know, sometimes, Jared, you just got to, you got to find some, you got to find somebody to lean on. And right. JC. That's, that's where Ozuna's going. From the Braves. Oh, See fuck, man. Sorry. Sorry, my man. I'm Ozuna from the Braves. Well. Oh. <clears throat> also, did you see, uh, I saw something, because right after this arrest, he, he switched from the, the neon green arm sleeve just went to a white arm sleeve, which is apparently the second time he's done that after getting arrested. Wait, what? <laughs> so, so after he got arrested the first time, he switched from the neon green just to a regular white arm sleeve, like as to not yeah. draw attention to himself. Yes, what I saw. I mean, I don't remember that. It was a tweet, <laughs> but he definitely oh. switched the white arm sleeve this past week. So he's back to the white arm sleeve. You know, God, hey man, but, hang with uh, him. Yeah, was hang he on any him. type of probation? Like, to, was this like a violation uh, of any yeah, probation? He's, he's on probation with the league and with the police, so he's probably going to face a suspension. And I mean, is he in jeopardy of jail time here? I doubt it. Yeah, this is where. Yeah, doubt it. Nobody got hurt. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. I, this, this is where, and like, I don't think we need to spend too much more time on this, but this is where I think Rob Manfred, in all honesty, just, just trying to like play it down the middle here. Mm. This is where Rob Manfred could probably make a move to Ooh. set precedent Ooh. for for this. Yeah. And and <clears throat> look, man, I, I, I think if you have a genuine interest in cleaning up the game and and really kind of trying to keep intact certain levels of integrity of the game, as a player, as a member of the players union, you still have to look at things that are are bigger than just you know, notching victories for your side or, mm. you know, uh, uh, allowing freedoms to make these kinds of mistakes. Like if, if you, you enjoy the idea of being a superhero to little boys and girls who love what you do, then you do have to understand that along with that comes responsibility and whether or not you choose to exercise that is one thing. If you do choose to embrace that, then you should want there to be a certain level of integrity across the board. And this would be a moment in time where as a player, you would almost kind of just sit back and look at what Rob Manfred is going to do or wonder and and say, you know what? I think this is a starting point to start setting precedent for shit like this, because it feels like every time something happens, we lean back on the idea that there hasn't been precedent set. Well, you you have to start something in order for there to be precedent. Here you go. Mm. So we'll see. We will see. <clears throat> um, but I guess that's a kind of a pivot into the Atlanta Braves took two out of three from the Houston mm. Astros. Mm. Um, mm. It should be noted. No Verlander in this series. Uh-huh. Um, we did see Lance McCullers. Uh, what did we see? Javier in game two. Spencer Strider Christian versus Christian Javier. Yeah. And then uh, the series finale, we saw, ooh, Jose Urquidy. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think that this was, uh, especially with the walk-off on Saturday, this was uh, something that could help the Braves get that narrow. Oh, they only beat bad teams. They only beat bad teams. I mean, like, that series against the Mets, that's a pretty good fucking team. That's a really good fucking team. They won yeah. that series coming off of an ass beating, losing four out of five against them. Then they play against the Houston Astros, a rematch of last year's World Series. The Houston Astros, one of the best teams in baseball. And again, there was no Justin Verlander. So that needs to be noted. <clears throat> but they did take two out of three. Um, and going up against Serkiti and Javier, like the, I mean, it's not like they don't have... It's, they're not just, their rotation isn't just built around Justin Verlander, but he is... Uh, no, one fucking, of the best, if not the you're best, pitcher about in the fucking league this year. as well. No, the Framber, Astros. Are, I don't yeah. think Framber didn't pitch in that series though either, right? No, no. I think it was Javier Urquidy and McCullers. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Not in that order, just those three dudes. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Um, but imagine a Max Fried pitched. Yeah, Max Fried. Who got Fried? Was it Mark Canna? Did he give up the two-run homer to Mark Canna? Was that that at bat? Mark Canna yeah. hit the fucking tying home run. Made down it two two four, down seven four. No, he down seven four. You're talking he about the, the Philly series. Homer. Yes, I'm talking about the Mets series. His last, I think Max Fried's last time out, I think was against the Mets, and he gave up the two-run homer to, to tie it against Canna. Mm-hmm. But I mean, fucking Canna just went off against. Um, Against the Phillies, I mean, like the the Mets yes. dropped their nuts on the Phillies. Mark Canna dropped oh, his yeah. nuts on the Phillies. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? The game tying homer and then the go ahead homer. Yeah. Dude, yeah. the the Phillies broadcast is like they're the best to listen to. When the Phillies are losing, the Phillies oh. broadcasts are the best. They oh. want to shoot themselves. It's <laughs> so <laughs> obvious. Crucky. It's so <laughs> obvious. Cruck literally, Cruck. literally after the I think the second home run to put them down by two or three and next year, or the ninth inning was like, I'm gonna say something. High ball, left field. <laughs> oh no. He's homered again and what a bat flip. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Crucky Kruk, is is a beautiful human for a lot of reasons, and Randy Nimmo just added some insurance. <laughs> they were not happy. His, 
<laughs> yeah, and his uh, his curmudgeonry at times, like it, it, it's it comes across. And obviously, for you to identify them as you know a a beautiful listen or an entertaining listen when they're losing, I think is indicative of that. Yeah, they that that that's. I mean, they went viral for their uh, solemn reactions to the Canna go ahead Homer and the Nimmo Homer, but um, that's not the first time that the Phillies broadcast has gone viral for wanting to kill themselves in the booth. That's that's They're like good. their mo. Yeah, <laughs> they're really good at it. They're Frank. really good at it. He was Krunk was blaming the rain delay. He was so he's like, I'm gonna say something, but you know, I I want to keep my job. You hit him with one of those. He's like, I'm about to say it. I'm about to say it. Damn. Just he's know like, that you I'm know there. what? I'd rather not. I better not. I better <laughs> not go there. Good. Good for him. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I mean the same thing with the Phillies. This is like the kind of a classic Phillies loss yesterday where they had the lead like uh, at least twice. And they had like a 4 0 lead, 7 4 lead. And then they went up 8 7. They blew the lead three times. Yeah. All with the bullpen. And I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure they made a, a few errors in that series that were bad. Mark Cannon has been a hell of a pickup for the Mets. He's in 275, a 374 on base. Uh, the slug could, could use some work, but a 785 OPS. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'll take I mean, that all day. Fifteen the, doubles, ten homers. Look, yeah, look at their look at their additions. Look at the Mets additions, the guys that they added, and look at what they're doing. They're doing great. Fucking uh, th- it! I don't know that it could play out much better. Like when you go and get a group of guys, like when you go and get multiple players. And they start to perform and they perform and they continue to perform. And now you look up and you are the best team in your division. And you have essentially cemented a postseason. Like that's how you draw it up. Mm. That is how you draw it up. And that's what is happening for the Mets. Love to see it. Love to see it. That was one of their biggest wins of the year. And, and you can. You can't even really speak about the quality. Like earlier in the year, if they did this to the Phillies, which they did, did it? Wasn't that one of the games like that the Phillies were winning seven nothing and then they lost to the Mets? Mm-hmm. Like they that uh, yeah. yeah. At the time, the Phillies were a dumpster fire. Now they're eleven games over five hundred. Like the the Phillies are a formidable opponent. Opponent. They have a seventy three percent chance of making the postseason. They have a plus sixty five run differential. Uh, again, eleven games over five hundred in a playoff spot. And the Mets still kind of emasculated them in that series <laughs> at home in their house, in their house. Mm. So the Mets are now uh, one win away from joining the Los Angeles Dodgers as the, the only, only with two teams, teams with at least 80 wins. Yeah, the Dodgers are on another planet right now. They were on that. They're not that, that far away. There's not to- a ton of separation there. Uh, it's not a ton. I mean, Jared, you've got one team. <laughs> Six and a half. The games. Dodgers have. Yeah, but I like that. That's that's within the standings, and and look, a lot of that. The the New York Mets are dealing with a. I mean, dare I call it a better division? Can you call it a better division? Is it a better division? A Probably lot better. Not. Is it? I, I think the, the bottom the two East teams. Is, the, the NL East is way better than the West. Like is the, the Padres better. are in second place and they're closer to last than they are the, Do- the Dodgers. Yeah. Yeah, the Padres are, are worse than the Phillies, basically. But the first three teams by in record. the East are better than the first three teams in the West? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, definitely. Like the Giants, the the Padres are the the only other team with a winning record in that division. What's that? The the Padres are the only other team in the West with a winning record. Yes, I mean the well, the Giants are like right at five hundred, right? One up or or they're one below. below, Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. What's the run differential for the Dodgers? Dodgers scored almost three hundred fucking runs. 
plus 264. And what are the, what's the Mets run differential? Plus 126. So double. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, you can There's tell me that there. the standings yeah. are close, and that's mm-hmm. fine. But one team is significantly better right now. Let me ask you this question, Dallas. Significantly better. Let me ask you this question. <clears throat> Fire away. Are we wasting our time watching this season because the Dodgers are not just that much better than the, the next best team in the National League? They're that much better than every other team in baseball? Are we wasting our not, time knowing what the end, how this ends? No. No. Because there are rotations out there that could make it interesting. There are rotations out there that could, I, I don't want to say bring them to a halt, but that could really test the depth of a lineup. Look, the depth of a lineup really starts to shine when a guy on the mound is struggling. And the depth of a lineup impacts guys on the mound, think starters, because of the pressure they apply because of their ability to have quality at bats back to back to back to back to back. When you talk about no let up in a lineup, you're typically looking at lineups with guys who are uh, are aggressive, but strategically aggressive, meaning they don't necessarily jump on the first pitch, but they might not be working a deep count because within the first three pitches, they're going to get something that they feel like they can handle against you. Uh, you're also going to have a lineup full of guys who put the ball in play, and that's that's where the test comes for the guy on the mound against a lineup of depth. If that guy on the mound happens to be a frontline starter, though, a one, two, a Verlander, a Framber Valdez type guy, well, now that conversation's a little different. If that guy happens to be a Max Scherzer, a Jacob deGrom, a McGill on a good day, why do do they not have as good of a chance? Because you could probably line up the ones, the twos, the threes across the board against the Dodgers and feel pretty fucking good about yourself if you're the New York Mets, if you're the Houston Astros, if you're teams like that. So it's not just a formality right now that we have to play this thing out so the Dodgers can be crowned. They're not guaranteed tomorrow once you get to October. And that's the beautiful part about this is that there's teams who are scratching and clawing to get there who very well could represent the hurdle that the Dodgers need to clear. And maybe maybe they don't. So the, the Dodgers, yeah, leader in the clubhouse. Your fucking favorite. Absolutely. But, but, not, but not wasting our time. Not wasting our time. No, Someone no, no, could no, no, be. No. The Dodgers, the Dodgers like bench slash role players are better than a third of the league's everyday guys mm-hmm. you, you <laughs> like, like, i don't take, even think that that's an exaggeration like there are no, guys that are the dodgers bench yes. guys and, and like david take, price is coming out of their fucking bullpen and he's having a great like david price is better than a lot of guys like a lot of teams number three four five starters that guy's coming out of the fucking bullpen yeah <laughs> it's it really is it's 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 just i don't I mean, it's laughable it's laughable to look at the depth of this team and and just watch the production continue to roll. I mean, think about what they've gotten from fucking Trace Thompson. And fucking like Andrew Thompson. Heaney. What, what are we talking about? Like they just they just pluck guys out of January sure. and like you look, are look. an all-star. You're an all-star. You're now an ace. Like fucking look. uh uh Chris Taylor. Like who the fuck was Chris Taylor a few years ago? And now everyone, they, they were like having a bidding war over the guy. Some teams are like, we want to make you our franchise cornerstone player. No, I think I want to, I'm going to stay in LA and just kind of like do a little bit of everything. Yeah. I mean, Tr- Trace Thompson in, I, well, uh, is it, is it 16? Se- no, is it 17 or 18? I think 2018. I think 2018, he was with the fucking Oakland A's. Like, Trace mm-hmm. Thompson made a stop in Oakland. Absolute nobody. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not calling him a nobody. No, I am. I am. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, you can call him a nobody. Yeah. Um, no, at the time, like, but when you play for the A's. But but this is this is the well he he hadn't done much. I don't think. I mean, he was because well, he was with the. Where did he come from? Was he with the White Sox? And then the Dodgers, the Dodgers, the White Sox. I think the White Sox, the Dodgers, because this is his second time back with the Dodgers. Um, but anyway, yeah, I mean, like he's what's he hitting? He's hitting fucking, he's in like 280, 285. He's got 140 OPS plus. <clears throat> uh, I'll let me find the name. But like um, that's the kind of like that that's the kind not to get bogged down on it, but that's the kind of performance that you're getting from guys that make up the depth when you're like, well, uh, they're not going to be that good for it. Well, I, oh, whatever. They're, they're, they're that good right now. Trace Thompson, Trace Thompson is balling out right now in, in regards to his role and what's being asked of him. You'll fucking take it. Absolutely. If that's what you're getting on getaway day. Sure. There's, um, <clears throat> I don't know. Have you, have you ever heard the name Tim Laker? Tim Laker. I have not heard the name Tim Laker. Craig Wallenbrock. Craig Wallenbrock. I have not heard the name Craig Wallenbrock either. Are these? And then I don't know how team? to. I don't know how to pronounce this last name, but it's Robert Van S C O Y O C. How would you pronounce that? Soyak. S C Y O C. S C O Y O C. Yeah, Skoyak. Something like that. Anyways, yes, cool. um, these three dudes <clears throat> apparently were just, I don't know what their backstory is, but there were a lot of major leaguers who were advocating for their teams to hire any one of these three guys. Uh, what Matt Carpenter did with the Yankees this year, he worked with them. Paul Goldschmidt, who's polishing his 2022 National League uh, MVP trophy. Holla! He worked with them too. Guess who hired all three of them? Trace Thompson. The Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> the Dodgers. Like, t- like, there were players that were like, hey, look at what they're doing with Goldie and, and, and Maddie over there in the Bronx. And like, the Dodgers were just like, oh, this trio of guys? All right, yeah, okay. They hired all three. Three. Lock him up. Yeah. So, like, the the guys that fixed... I mean, like, fucking... Matt Carpenter w- was on pace to hit 70 home runs this year. And Paul the, Goldschmidt... The doc- how old is Paul Goldschmidt? He's got to be, what, 32 now? 33? Uh, I was going to say, yeah, 32, 33. How, he's having the best fucking year of his career. And... So, the, do- the, do- the Dodgers just put on fucking ski masks, jumped in the van with no windows, and went cruising down the street. And we're like, oh, you three dudes, you're with us now. <laughs> yep. Jump in. Or yep. we're going to fucking stuff you in. Yeah, right? so it's it's basically like this? what the Yankees did with like Matt Blake. They're like, oh, there's some guy with some buzz that the players like. They like working with this guy. All right. Well, he works for us now. Doesn't work for anyone else. He just, he just works for us. And the Dodgers yeah. did the same thing. They're like, oh, there's this guy that's like fixing all these fucking players that are, you know, ta- that are already talented in their own right. Like we're not making like a yeah, dipshit into a genius in. here, but we we. Yeah, there, we're, we're and like it's that that other thing too. I was talking to to David Cohen about it. Um, some of like the method, like with Aaron Judge <clears throat> and his swing, and how he's gotten it to. Uh, there's just no holes in it anymore. It's more of like a like an uppercut, like through the zone, but then up, like pushing towards and then up, and that's what some of these guys are just doing now. And it's clearly it's clearly working. And uh, apparently the secret sauce is now with the L.A. Dodgers. Hey, look at fucking Joey Gallo. What the fuck? The guy just shows Dude, up. Dude fucking just walks in the door. <laughs> hey, how about a thousand OPS, Joey? I know you can't hit the ball to save your fucking life, but we're going to teach you something that's going to save yours. How's that sound? I mean, he's got like a fucking 184 OPS plus or something like that since walking in the I- door. Like that's not I, I, like people were trying to attribute it to, oh, he got out of the Bronx and now he has a clear head and people aren't booing him anymore. And he's on the beaches in California. He's working with some of the most influential hitting coaches in, in the hitting philosophy people in, in the fucking history of the game right now. And he's unlocking it. Yeah. And the Dodgers have locked <laughs> yeah. that up. 
Yeah, dude. And that's, and that's <clears> just, <throat> if you're talking about hitting coaches or coaches in general, like I think their pitching is way more impressive where they have like seven starters mm-hmm. and they all just to try to save guys. They're like going up and down and they're moving them around. So they're all, and they they have five starters with an ERA under three. <laughs> and a lot of these guys are people who aren't fucking aces. Who might, Bite hey, your might fucking be in the tongue, playoff, champ, because Tony Gonsolin is knocking on the door. <laughs> I'm that's saying Cy Young. Tony Gonsolin. After fucking, I mean, he's, not, after, he's not a guy, dude. After he's Sandy not one of those guys who's what, irrelevant. You hate cats? You hate cats, Joe? Just say you hate cats. Um, I like Tony. I don't like Tony Gonsolin. You, you do or you don't? But I'm, you do or you uh, don't? Fine. I mean, no, I like Tony Gonsolin. But he okay, well, because that could very well be your kind of NL Cy Young. Well, I'm talking more of like a Tyler Anderson. Nah, he cost Andrew himself Heaney. the Cy Young at the All Star game. Who, Tony? Mm-hmm. No, no. Yeah, he, that was bad. No one's gonna take him seriously after that. <clears throat> and in front of his home fans, yeah, we just fine. But, but speaking to, speaking to the depth, what, what, I mean, I I brought this up, and not like I told you so. I'm saying I I brought this up as he was starting to work his way back through his minor league rehab. So Dustin May is back. He is back. Dustin May is back. I'm fucking angry about this trio of coaches because I'll be honest, <laughs> the the Red Sox had, had the chance to hire all three of them and they passed. Yeah, well, you passed on all of them because you guys know what you're doing, right? Jared, you've allocated your resources adequately and perfectly, man. It's just I don't want you to tell you. You're not. No, no, no. Have, it's one of those things where like I can, I can, okay. I can talk it's shit okay. about my little brother, it's, but like the, the schoolyard it's, it's, bully can't. Like, that's okay. okay. I can well, beat up my brother well, and that's fine, but you can't. You're, you're an actual bully. I don't keep the Red Sox out your fucking mouth. <laughs> keep the Red Sox out you your fucking come, mouth. You gonna come fucking slap me? You want? You wanna... Yeah, I'll slap the goddamn taste out of your mouth. <laughs> Dustin May is back. Dustin May is back, and I've slapped this label on him before. And after one start, five innings, one hit, two walks, nine punches, Dallas tickets. N- uh, I'm willing to slap this label right back on him now that he's back after one start. He is my favorite pitcher to sit down and watch. He is. Like, well, I will I mean, sit down and watch a Dustin May start right now. Even, even with how, like, Alcantara is pitching, how Verlander is pitching, Jacob deGrom is back, Max Scherzer is doing his thing. If you tell me that I have one TV and all those guys are pitching on the same night, I will put on the Dodgers to watch Dustin May pitch. I, I will. I don't. I don't know if. Uh, I don't know if this is like a perfect marriage of camera angles and his movement, but for whatever reason, like and twenty I, I inches agree. of fucking break on his two seamer. Twenty I, 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 inches. So I, that's that's like I, a fucking Randy Johnson slider, right. but it's a two right. seamer. What the but fuck are going, we doing here? It's going the other way, and it's doing that at a hundred miles an hour at times. Like yeah. that's so like just the visual and that's what I was that's what I was getting at is the 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 perfect marriage between his shit and how it moves and how hard it comes out and the camera angles at which we're watching this shit come out of his hand and move he's a football pitcher in the big leagues yeah sometimes it's not even the strikes that are fun it's sometimes it's the misses like oh that one the got Machado, away from like he, 26 he's, he's, inches of movement He's buckled Machado like three times. None of those pitches were in the strike zone. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's because <laughs> what? W- like what you what you are watching as a fan when you watch a hitter, especially a hitter like Manny Machado, look that bad on stuff and just buckle. You're watching in real time that hitter, their fight or flight instinct kick in and what they're being told is that baseball is getting ready to go all the way through your body. So you need to get the fuck out the way, yo. you need to bail. And then you're like, Oh, wait a minute. It's already too late, but I see the spin now. And that's going to, that's going to be gross. I guess I'll flail at this for actually, I don't know why I'm even flailing at this. Maybe it's because I want to get the fuck out of here and I don't want to see I don't want to see any of this anymore. And like, that's sort of the anatomy behind the mindset. When you got a guy out there blowing hundos, moving it 20 to 25 inches to the right as a right-hander and spinning that bitch in the opposite direction, the same amount of fucking move. It's, it's gross. It is gross. I've said this about Dustin May. 
he is the perfect example of someone that they would have burned at the stake during the Salem witch trials. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that's, like a that's, huge, They would have been like, this dude has sorcery, sorcery, sorcery. magical powers, like demon powers. They would have, they would have just looked at him and been like, oh, he's he's a he's a fluffy ginger. We have to burn him anyway. But yeah. the fact yeah. that he can make. Uh, balls fly out of his hand at 100 miles an hour that move the way that they do when they're not supposed to do that. He he would have been a prime candidate to be burned at the stake in the Salem well, Witch Trials. This dude believe, is it, like... I dubbed his slider what? the Demon Breaker. Like, it, it was... The Demon Breaker. It was fucking lethal. Is fuck just... It is lethal. It's not as sick. You think it's better than Blake Trident's? I think his is like this the, on TV. Like the well, looking at that is fucking insane. Yeah. And, and again, Joe, you want to know why? Because and this is this is a credit to Blake because he's worked really hard on this. And shout out Cressy. Um, the downward movement, right? The depth on his sinkers, because you're again, those are bowling balls. That's a sinker. Because I've seen Blake Trident at a hundred miles an hour throwing yeah. fucking. Sankers, like 2018, no he chance. was he was just as electric as Dustin May is now. Like 2018, Blake Trinan was you. Oh, I don't know was, how anyone get, got a hit off of him. No, it was stupid. Not only was Blake Trinan stupid in 2018, Lou Trevino was stupid in 2018. Yeah. Both those dudes and, and both those dudes had ridiculous shit. I mean, Lou Trevino was blowing 100 miles an hour with a stupid slider, a stupid curveball. Yeah, he fell his off. changeup was just something he fucking threw. Um, Shout out Lou Trevino, who fell off. Who did just become a New York Yankee, two yeah, and a third off. scoreless. Very mid. Did a good job wiggling out of some spots. Sweet Lou. Mid. Yeah, mid. But, mid uh, that's what people call mid. him now. <laughs> right, sweet Lou. Yeah, some absolutely disgusting shit from Dustin May. And again, the depth. Like that's that's what you're getting back. You get what you get from a guy like Gonsolin, who's undefeated for God mm. knows how long. And Andrew Heaney and Tyler Anderson, lost the All Star game. Dust- though. Yeah, whatever. Dustin May shows up. And says, hey, guys, remember me? <laughs> you think they would make him clo- closer? I mean, one because Kimbrel and they have all these pitchers, and they still have Kimbrel as the closer, mm-hmm. and he blows every game <laughs> recently. Okay, all right. And it's like, who's it going to be? If you you want to know him? who's not worried though? The Dodgers. Dave Roberts. Well, are these why are these are they going to replace him? Didn't or he say he's not what? worried about it? Because they're going to replace him. Are they replacing him? They sh- they have thirty fucking pitchers who are all good, and one who's not good. And they he's can the afford one. to weather a Craig Kimbrell rough patch. Yeah, <laughs> they've been doing it, dude. They've been on the best best record in the history of baseball, and I think they can put Craig Kimbrell at first game. base and still win the World Series. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I mean, like it, it's an interesting thought, but I, I feel like you've got to identify the you know your three guys, your three four guys that you're going to be able to lean on during these postseason series. And I would venture to guess by the time the dust settles, Dustin May is going to be closer to the front of that line than maybe an Andrew Heaney. I don't know. Yeah, so let's get Andrew Heaney in the ninth. Well, look. There are no rules come October, and the Dodgers are not worried about finishing baseball games right now. Not to say that it's not something you have to pay attention to. That's why I said they can probably weather a Craig Kimbrell storm. So when you get to October, you've probably done your due diligence in the month of September leading up to the days off that you'll have and right into that first series. You've identified who's going to get the ball in those leverage spots because. I believe that you have to find a balance between knowing that your save could come in the sixth and seventh inning and also knowing that those last three outs of the ball game are still very different. I don't care if I'm facing your seven, eight, nine. I don't care if I'm facing two out of three guys that are coming off your bench that are reserved in this spot right here, but I don't care about any of that. Those three outs at the end to end it, they're different and they matter. So I got to find somebody who can get us through that shit storm in the sixth, seventh inning, kind of calm stuff down. And then when it's all said and done, who's going to be my hammer? That will be figured out. But I truly believe that if the Dodgers believe that, 
the idea that the save can come before the ninth, which they know it does. Who's to say you have to have that that bona fide stopper in the ninth inning if you're the Dodgers specifically? Because how many times do you think that we're going to see these one run ball games that they got to wiggle out of? Two run ball games that they got. They've been kicking the fuck out of everybody. Yeah, they have had. No, it's been all blowouts. They've lost. They've lost like I don't, like four games since the All Star break. Something insane. Yeah, but but and you know what? Wins uh, are by uh, like I six mean, runs. Yeah, and it's not. It's not like getting into the weeds on this, but who knows? You don't play tight ball games, you know. And like, what are we talking about? Playing meaningful baseball coming down the stretch? Are the Dodgers going to be playing meaningful baseball? going down the stretch. Well, the division is not a threat. The division's locked up. Like we're closer to a magic number for the Dodgers, right? Like that's, <laughs> it feels like that's coming soon <laughs> and we're not even through August. Um, so yeah, maybe playing tight ball games for the first time in the postseason could be a little dash of cold water in the face of the Dodgers. Like, Oh fuck. It's three to one ninth inning, eighth inning. Like, ah. Eh. But I mean, that's, you know, that's splitting hairs because like, are we really thinking the Dodgers are worried about winning a ball game if they're up three to one in the eighth or ninth? No, nope, probably but not. We've seen them. We've seen a lot of, we've seen a lot of dominant Dodgers teams n- not win at all. Yes, we have. So yes, we have Jim. going back to the original question all the way at the start. Is it meaningful to even watch? It definitely is because I would say the Dodgers probably have a better chance of not winning the World Series than winning the World Series because that's just the fact of – because that's just the truth of every team. There's a better chance. There's no team that you can say has over 50% chance to win the World Series. But you're talking about a Dodgers team that statistically is twice as good as the next best team from a run differential standpoint. So I – I'm not saying that, yeah. like, you know, there are chances of winning. The, like, if you were, if I were to pull up fan graphs right well, now, what are the chances of the Dodgers winning I, the World Series? It's probably going to be somewhere in like well, the low 20%, is, which is fucking high. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's 20%, but that's what I was going to say is I, I believe statistically they are favored to win the World Series and they are in yes. the best spot to be winning. Yeah. World, like, that. yeah. But it's the Dodgers. I don't think that, like, if I, I'm, I'm going to pull it up right now and I'll tell you what the fan graphs odds of the, the Dodgers winning the World Series are this year. And I, I can tell you. It'll probably I can tell be you. fair. Um, 17.4%. So right around 20, where, what we estimated. Uh, and that's not 17.4% is more of an indication of how unpredictable the postseason is. Then how much better the Dodgers are than everybody else? Okay, yeah. Uh, the Mets also have seventeen point five percent chance to win. Point five. They have a better chance than the Dodgers. Oh no! Well, I'm what I'm looking at has them both at seventeen point five. I've got yeah seventeen point four. But yes, the Mets, the Mets have the same percentage odds of winning the World Series as the Dodgers do. The next best, the Astros, the Astros have 15.7. The Yankees have 9.3. Well, though, you've skipped the Braves. Okay, come on. The Ten, Braves, 10.6. The Braves have a better chance of winning the World Series right now than the New York Yankees. Uh, who does that shock? Uh, Yankee fans. <laughs> we won it last year, dude. We have actually the best odds if you look at the real facts. I don't know. I don't know. But I want the best odds of having better gut health. I know that. And our next partner. Yeah. Our next partner has a product that I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 before the LA trip. For the All-Star Game, speaking to Tony Gonzalez and ruining his chances of winning the Cy Young. um, I started taking AG1 right before that trip. Because I want a better gut health and more energy. And now that I've been on it for a few weeks, I feel great. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and aptogens to help you start your day right. And here's why I love it. I do four podcasts a week. I do a stream. We're traveling. We're doing all kinds of meet and greets. It's tiring. Waking up and taking my AG1 gives me the energy that I need 
to do all these things every single week with no days off, Jake. Jake probably works more than I do. Because after all, I do all the shows. He's still going to stay up. What time did you go to sleep last night? Well, we didn't do a show last night. But well, on average, what, what time do you go to sleep, Jake? Uh, when we record the Sox podcast, it's like 3, 4 a.m. Jeez. Ugh. Jeez. That's why Jake's an AG1 guy. It's got all my vitamins and minerals that I need in an easy one scoop serving. And now that I'm on the road more, I can bring the to-go packs with me for early wake-up calls. Cost you less than three bucks a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Supports better sleep quality and recovery. So if you're one of those fitness freaks like Dallas, who looked great in those mom jeans, (laughs) right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. There's no need for a million different pills, gummies, whatever else you're taking, supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Red Sox. That is athleticgreens.com slash Red Sox to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Love that. Um, speaking of speaking of gut health, um, yeah, where is this going? I uh, well, uh, I I saw a um, y- you know how they tell you to watch baseball every day. You never know what you're going to see. You show up to the ballpark every uh-huh. day. You're probably going to see something that you've never seen before. Yeah. Well, well, that happens. Yeah. I'm here to tell you it happens. It happens every day. Uh, it, it happened to me, happened to me yesterday, mm-hmm. happened to be yesterday. I what happened? was, well, I was calling a major league baseball game. I do that from time yeah. to time. Right. Uh, and you know, in between innings, you're just kind of checking shit out. Every announcer has a pair of binoculars. So you just scan the crowd and you know, you got friends at the game, whatever you can check them out. You see him wave high, blah, blah, blah. Hey, where are you sitting? I'll check you out. Um, and so you just scan the crowd. You're, you're looking for shit, and especially at the Coliseum, because when I go to games at the Coliseum, when we have off days, like we did the other day, I go and sit way up in the top corner at the Coliseum. I just, I love sitting up there, just kind of hang out. I like taking in the ball game from there. So I know that people venture around these these parts of the ballpark. So I'm scanning. I'm, I'm scanning. I'm looking around, checking shit out. And I'm scanning through my binoculars and uh, oh, oh, what? Hold on. This can't be re- No, that's fucking real. That is absolutely real. That's happening. Mm. I noticed a a young couple, mm-hmm. a young baseball fan couple. Mm-hmm. Um, just let's just say they were taken in the ball game. She was taken in a little more, <laughs> uh, but they were both taken in the ball game. Jared, mm-hmm. uh, her mm-hmm. ball game appeared to be strong, to quite mm-hmm. strong. Right. <laughs> I, I could not believe what I was seeing. This lady, girl, young lass, mm-hmm. was. Blowing the dude that she was watching the ball game with in the upper deck. Right. Unbelievable. Unfucking believable. Did they so, get away with this? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> they got away with it. I mean, and obviously we have we have already seen the video on the internet. And it's on the baseball I, I just like, dead Twitter is- account for anyone who hasn't seen it. Yeah, it was, I, I, I just could not believe, I mean, you know what? It's not graphic. Like you can't, there's no, you don't see any organs, you know? I mean, for all, for all I know, she was helping him trying to locate a a lost sunflower seed, you know, like there's (laughs) like, you can, you can make it the video what you will, (laughs) but, (laughs) but holy shit. Um, yeah, just another, another day at the Coliseum. And I I can tell you this, um, it did not stop there. Yeah. They they had intercourse. Stop there. There was, (laughs) there was, 
actual intercourse mm-hmm. during the baseball game. I mean, if you're gonna, oh, if you're ever gonna like do it in a big league ballpark, <laughs> I feel like the last row at the Coliseum is the place to do it. I mean, well, like, it's, there's not a lot going on up there in the upper deck. <laughs> Yeah. No, that's the only thing going on up there. That's why it's it's kind of you kind of got to blend in or at least try when you're the only person in an entire section. But I, and but you're I, I hope uh, so, <laughs> someone someone's gonna film it and put it on Twitter for the fucking entire world to see. It could happen to anybody. I would like them to be a little smarter, personally. <laughs> I feel like Joey, I feel like you've uh I don't know if they needed to sign a waiver at that point because I feel like once you're there in a place where filming is occurring and this is going to be disseminated throughout our country and other countries like you're kind of you know you're you're just you're part of the game now. <laughs> you're 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 a part of the game. Yeah, I I yeah. hope though now that I think about it, I hope that they heeded the advice from the Coliseum itself, the building itself, you know, because in the upper deck, we tarp it. We tarp it in the upper deck. So I hope mm-hmm. he, I hope he tarped it is all I'm saying. I'm going to say uh, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, not time, not time. The rain, <laughs> it started to get wet quickly. Didn't have time to roll the tarp out. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Those types uh, of people usually aren't the safest, you know. They're really, <laughs> but but you know what? <laughs> those are the type of people, Joey, that I like to roll with, you know, because those are the type of people that are that are coming across the finish line when this when this whole life is all said and done. Those are the ones that are that are coming across the finish line with with one wheel, no windshield, <laughs> just a, a lot of fucking dents and dings on the door panels. Yeah. No license plate. They're just skinned through. Yeah. <laughs> and then Barstool that. stole the video. <clears throat> Which yeah. fucking. So hey. I'll, I'll lay this out. I'll lay this out because people were coming at me for just they, they, they ripped the video. We put it on the baseball is dead Twitter. And they're so afraid of us that they did not want to just share the video from baseball is dead and, and promote the show, whatever. Cause they have another baseball podcast. It sounds great. Uh, it's called starting nine. Um, just <laughs> launched from, from oh. all descriptions. It just launched. Uh, and a lot of good work done. They ripped the video, put it on a burner and then tweeted it on the barstool main handle. And I just responded to it and I said, yep, hat tip baseball is dead. Like you just stole that from us. Then I got people coming at me being like, isn't that what you do every night with baseball highlights? Like, well, no, no, no. Like, I share the video from the direct source that it comes from. Like, I don't rip the video and then post it as if it's my own, which is what they did. Yeah. Um, Well, explain. explain, And people were like, just uh, let let me say this. What what rip versus share means. So I'll explain because Dallas, Dallas is new to the game. Well, you're you're you've learned it. You've you've grasped it quite quickly i think so if you're on twitter and uh you see a funny video you can there's an option to tweet video and when you do that uh you're sharing the original person's video and they get all the views and it just goes directly back to them and at the bottom of your tweet it'll say from dallas Braden or from baseball is dead what they did is they took the tweet from baseball is dead like they still monitor us and Obviously, like they they still need baseball content, so they come to us. Uh, but they took the video from Baseball is Dead, took either screen recorded it, or there's a website that you can convert a, a Twitter video to a file. Then you download it, and then you can airdrop it to your phone, and then you can tweet it from your burner account, which is what they did. Um, so I, I just pointed it out, and then they're like, oh, like the fact that you even care about this. Well, so here's why I care about this. It's the principle because. On the last Dave Portnoy show, Dave was like, hey, Gaz, it's starting nine is doing better without Jared, right? Well, well no, <laughs> it's not even close. They're getting boat raced in the rankings, which like I don't well, like any time that someone it, when people just tweet at me. The fact that he even asked that question, because neither one of those fucking dudes, neither one of those dudes has listened to an episode no. of it 
ever. No, no. So, <laughs> uh, I don't know who is is going to Dave with uh, analytics or whatever information and this and that. Come on. Uh, the but yeah, here. like one simple look at the rankings would tell you that like they are getting boat raced. Like it is like Dodgers, fucking uh, Rockies, Diamondbacks <laughs> territory there. So, and that's like not like a, a jab at the people that work on that show. That's just to say to Dave, like, shut the fuck up. Like you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but I think, I think, uh, you know, like they would like to pretend that it's doing better because they're actually promoting it now, which is nice. When we were there, um, the only time that we got a big push was when we first launched, which was in 2017, which was before like Barstool was like Barstool. Like, it wasn't big then. Uh, so we never got like this big push when Barstool was this, you know, after the churn and sale, after the pen sale, like never happened. So. The only time that we got a huge push was when we got the first ever full length sit down interview with Bryce Harper. He had never done a full length interview like that before ever. And that was not like Barstool was doing. Like he, he listened to CCK. Like he, he used to listen to this, the CCK show that I did. And then we hooked up like on Instagram, started texting. You build up a friendship, you build up a trust. And then he was like, this is the place that I want to do this. So that had nothing to do with them. Uh, and the only time they ever like pushed us like by putting out clips and being like, Hey, listen to this episode was the Bryce Harper episode. And now they push the fuck out of that show. Every single episode, like the push that we got for the Bryce Harper one. So it's just, it's funny to like see well, it now. That, uh, that's where you how just, much that's they where care you just once. Back. Yeah. Once we're gone. No, but, but Jared, you know, it's empty and you know why the push is happening. Yeah. Yeah, it is so, what it is. Like I, per- and people are like you shouldn't you care should, so much. I'm like, I don't care. I just, I don't think that the public knows that side of it, where it's like they never fucking gave a shit well, about like, Jared, us listen, when we just, were there. Just think about this, and no, now that we're no. gone, they're like, we got this new show. Check it out, brand new. Never heard of it but before. That's... Check it out. Download, rate, subscribe. And it's like, dude, you had you had us there, and never gave a fuck. You just you didn't. You didn't push us at all, which was fine because even without the the push of the main handle, we were always number one, number two in the baseball rankings. Mm-hmm. And now we, we never touched double digit rankings with that show ever. And that's where it sits now. So it is what it is. That's, again, not a slight against the people that do it now. It's not an easy gig. It's not easy to put out a good baseball podcast twice a week, every week. Well, no, and 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 I, I I would just wrap with this, like, cause like I said, I, I imagine <laughs> imagine being in the building, having those resources, and still not being able to get it done that way. That's what yeah. I think about, cause I'm doing this shit mobile, like with a uh, yeah. <laughs> not <laughs> never never set foot in that fucking office. Yeah, no, don't don't wor- don't worry about it. Don't let it don't let it uh, because. It, Know this, Jared. We just told the world, or whoever's not the world, we just told our world, you know, where the video came from, whatever. There will be a conscious ignoring of that fact. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, that's where you just got to realize, like, dude, you're dealing with like a thought process and a mind that just, you know, it's a big fake news mind. And that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And their, their list. policy before. So once they got called out as many times as they did for just like ripping other people's content, they had, they have like this, like almost like a permission slip where if they see a video that they want to post, but it was clearly shot by someone else, then they send them the, the thing. They got to fill it out and say, yes, I consent to you using it. You can repurpose it on all your channels. And you're like, you have to do that. But because it was our video, they're like, ah, fuck it. Like they're not going to like We've sue got breaking us. News. What is it? We've got breaking news. What is it? Oh Oakland A's couple allegedly engages in sex act at game. Cops investigating. What? That's, just, that's from. That's You're going to get TM- people put in the clank? That's from TMZ. That's from You're TMZ. You're going to get people oh, put no. in the no. clank, Dallas? No, no. Time out. So here, I'm going to, I'll read, I'll read this article right now. I'm reading it for the first time. I haven't read this article. I have no idea what it says. 
a couple allegedly engaged in a sex act in the stands at the Oakland A's game on Sunday. And now police tell TMZ Sports they're investigating it all. The two MLB fans were accused of going at it at some point during the athletics tilt with the Seattle Mariners at Ring Central Coliseum when a spectator in another part of the stadium appeared to capture the two getting it on in one of the last rows of the venue. Footage appears to show the woman performing oral sex on the man for several seconds. Like I said, I feel like she probably just lost a sunflower seed, maybe a contact. I digress. An Oakland Police Department spokesperson says cops are aware of the allegations and have launched a probe into the matter. The Oakland Police Department was not alerted to this until after the game, the spokesperson said, and we have initiated an investigation. If charged and ultimately convicted, we're told the penalty for the offense is up to six months behind bars and a fine of up to $1,000. No. They can't get arrested for that. That they weren't just, even doing it in sex, dude. That was like I said. You can't is, you you can't see anything. You can't a. You, you can't, can't see, see it, anything. And b. If I were that judge, my ruling would be that if you're having sex at a major league ballpark and the home team has a winning percentage under four hundred, it's a pass. Like, what else are it's you supposed legal. to do? Watch that team? No. It's, tr- it's no. Legal. And I think if you're a certain distance away from home plate, away from children in the crowds, that's free game. That's free game. It's the Oakland Coliseum. It's basically a brothel. It shouldn't. Like, it's not. <laughs> it's not City Field. It's not Oracle. It's, it's, it's the Coliseum. <laughs> Baseball's, it's a possum baseball's last whorehouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, easy. Easy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. There's uh, nothing wrong with with getting a little beach at the Coliseum. It's it's the least you can do. <laughs> it's the least you can do. Yeah. Uh, so so there's well, that. now I was I was literally going to pivot to like, hey, like, have you ever done anything? Thing crazy like that at a baseball park, but now like you're admitting to a fucking federal crime. Apparently now, now you're gonna yeah, tr- try to get someone hemmed up here, Jared. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> have never done I've that. Ever, uh, if you're asking if I've ever logged in at a baseball <laughs> game, buddy, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, I, yeah. There's the goddamn. Oh, there's so many good stories. So many good stories. Same, I, but Same. I, I mean, like from other people. <laughs> yeah absolutely from other people but yeah other people did did stuff yeah, like cra- that crazy shit crazy yeah, you wouldn't crazy believe shit. it yeah nope, nope. Um, well I so, hope they pro- I hope they get off oh! <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> you know what I mean oh man you know what I mean yeah, I, hope, I hope she spits the bit huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah oh Oh man! Yeah, they got to lighten right. up. By the looks of things, they're not going to be able to pull any fingerprints. <laughs> oh, oh! Hey. They got to lighten up there, <laughs> Oakland, yeah. California. Like they're just having a little sex, dude. It's it's yeah. a day game. The team sucks. Like what? Like come on. Like if if this were happening in a packed house. And there are tons of people around, and like people are wa- like no one knew that it was happening. No one was disturbed by this. If it weren't for no, that, uh, that. a rogue, if it weren't for a rogue I mean, filmer, are they, are they gonna are, are they gonna like facial recognition? Like what's? Uh, they're not gonna catch these people. No, they'll be fine. There's not a lot of people there, man. <laughs> They could probably well, it's do not some, like your uh, name is cameras. attached to the ticket. They're, they're, they're fine. They're fine. No, but then like it consider the crime. Like it's not like they left a backpack full of explosives there. Like then they would no. go into like the, the fucking cameras like everywhere to like find. No, Jared, Are you really going to tap into the security cameras in the concourse if they even have those to, to track these people Jared, down now? <laughs> what you're watching right now is you're watching. That's a, that's an image. That's a video of the bomb squad destroying an explosive satchel. All right. That's what that video <laughs> yeah. is. You're yeah. watching the bomb squad disarm that right. satchel of explosives right mm-hmm. before your very eyes. So yeah. have no fear. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, like, think about this. The man, the manpower and the energy 
that it would take to track, to track these people down. down and identify them. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, that Not manpower is better served in the city of Oakland somewhere else. That's what I'm saying. Like Oakland is just full of crime. Like you kidding me? You're gonna <laughs> you're gonna use your resources to find people who are just having a little sex on a Sunday. Right. Like I legitimately last night, last night, last fucking night, I sat out here on my patio, smoked Uh and watched a dude punch three car windows out in a row. (laughs) One thirty this morning, (laughs) all down the street. Just watch, watched it. I mean, that's just common. Come come to me and (laughs) did 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 he take anything? He just punched them and. Dip. He just he just punched him like they they punch him, and if there's anything in there, they'll grab. If not, they move on. Damn. See, I would look in the car first, then punch. But smash yeah, and I, grab. Damn. No, it's look, in the morning. I'd look, just smash and just grab. Anyway, yeah. Anyways, uh, the Padres are falling apart. Oh, I know yeah. we touched on them a little bit earlier. They've won two straight. They've won yeah, two they straight to, to kind of salvage their weekend, but but they Hater, got they got some they got some energy stuff that they got to situate. Yeah, Hater got demoted. They're actually they're not even saying that he's like demoted. They're saying he just like needs a little breather. Yeah, he's he's been removed of his duties for the time being. Yeah, just a little rough. I don't know how. Like, how do you? Is there enough time to build up enough confidence to make him your closer before the postseason? Like, is uh, there enough Josh runway Hader. to get that plane off the ground? Yes. It's Josh yes. Hader, man. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, you're exactly right, Joey. It's Josh Hader. The, like, that's, when you talk about, like, not being able to explain stuff like successes, failures that come out of nowhere, you know, either side of that, it, it really can just be a matter of mindset and confidence. And feeling differently when you're performing. And for Josh Hader, you get him in some good spots. You get him in some soft landings to succeed early. You just remind this animal of who he is, right? Because it's almost like you've thrown a lion into a room with a a, a bunch of servals and ocelots, which for your knowledge are large cats, but nowhere near the size of a lion, and that lion almost starts to walk around on eggshells around these ocelots and servals because he's like, well, there's fuck, there's mm-hmm. a lot of you. Like, I, yeah. But you put a mirror Here. in that room and remind that motherfucker that he's the king of the jungle and it's going to be a goddamn bloodbath in there. A goddamn here's, bloodbath. Here's uh, your boy, Bo Mel, on Josh Hader. The status of Hader in the closer role right now? We'll probably give him a break from that in the interim here. Let them work on some things. Our guys are, you know, Fritzy and Ruben are really good about identifying kind of small things, whether it's mechanical or whatever. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give them a couple different outings or, or however long we think it takes to get him back into that role. But our best team, obviously, is with Josh Hader in the, in the closer's role, and that's why we got him. So we'll give him a little break for now. Who will assume that position right now? Probably match up right now. See how we get there. Um, you know, we have a few guys that we target for that, but sometimes you use a certain guy before you get to the closer's role. It's just be a little different look for us at this point. Just how weird is it for you? I mean, Rogers went through the same thing, and, yeah. and obviously Heater, they're, they're both very good at times throughout the season. It's kind of uncanny for you to kind of have this. You know what? It, it happens. Yeah. You know, I think there are probably very few years that, you know, you, you actually have – same guy throughout the course of the season, whether it's a player that goes to a slump and you drop him in the lineup, same thing typically haps, happens with the closer's role. So hopefully it's just brief. That's so a, how, what's, what is the concern level of, of a Josh Hader right now? Because he was having, it's not like he got to San Diego and started slumping. Like this was happening before he got there, while he's there, and now he's uh, been demoted for the interim um, at the closer spot. Yeah, it, it could be, like I said, a combination of figuring some things out um, in the film room and confidence-wise. I, I, it's probably a happy medium between both of those things. And that's why, for Bob Melvin, telling you that we're going to identify matchups 
going forward. And like I just told you about a postseason scenario, he just told you that those outs that are important, those quote unquote ninth inning outs might come in the seventh inning, might come in the eighth inning, might come before I need to deploy that stopper. I've got somebody else down there that I feel I can do that if we're in that spot. But from here, we feel like we've got guys that can get outs in the right spot at the right time. So until Josh gets to a point where he's feeling comfortable and confident and blowing people away and he's comfortable with the fashion he's doing it in, then we can revisit handing him the ball and asking him to go get three, four outs, maybe five outs. But as of right now, we want to find, like if there's a tight spot in the sixth or seventh inning and we've got a a, a lead, well, that might be Josh Hader's spot now. Why? Because we need him to realize that in a tight spot, he's our dude. He's still our dude. So you build up and you fluff up and you turn that sixth inning with a three-run lead or the sixth inning with a four-run lead, but now there's two guys on, lefty at the dish with a bopper behind him on deck. Hater, you're our guy. And you might be thinking like, well, there's a four-run cushion here. Sure, there's two men on, but like, is this really the spot where you're using Hater right now with the lack of confidence? Yes, it is. Because when he rolls this inning and maybe goes out and gets me another one or so, that confidence, we're building that up because this is going to be the fucking dude we go to in the ninth or in that tight spot in the postseason. Does it worry you that the, um, because when they traded Hader, it was like, what the fuck? Why are they trading him? Right. You know, you're a contender. Uh, Why are they trading him? Is it something like, do do they know something that we don't know? Well, they're, they're, and then immediately gets there. And then you always, always worry about that because you think, is this an injury thing waiting to happen? Ha, do they feel like they've gotten to a point with him where they feel like there's something around the corner and they don't want to be here for it? Like, that's always a question. Always a question. That's why I said maybe it's a matter of getting in the film room because if you encounter a rough patch and you're not able to work through it or you're having a tough time working through it. It might be just a simple as a different set of eyeballs looking at different things. And we know that organization to organization folks are valuing different things. Folks are looking at different things. So you go to a new spot and it might be a matter of, all right, let's, let's let the dust settle. Let's get in the lab. Let's take a look at how things were going when you were good, when they started to go South, how they look right now, where we can make our adjustments. And the Dodgers have the luxury of doing that with some guys in their bullpen should they need that. The Padres are not necessarily in that place. They sit, what, they're second in the wild card right now? Mm. They're just not in a spot where you can kind of hope your way through it. They've got to get to work. They've got to figure this out. But yeah, by half with the ability Phillies. to match up. Yeah. So with the ability to match up, though, or the confidence, at least, that you're hearing from Bowmel, you know, you'd like to think that it's going to be sooner rather than later that they get this thing figured out. You hope so, anyway. Also, Bell, Bell's been dick since he got over there. He's in 138, yeah. Crickets. Uh, 263 Crickets. on base, 525. I mean, Juan Soto, you're not seeing a, a ton of um, buzz, I guess, about what he's been doing offensively. But 286, 438 on base. Obviously, he's still walking a fuck ton and the 898 OPS. So, I mean, he's, I wonder, he's been pretty I good. Why. I wonder why no one's talking about Juan Soto. What's going on in, in <laughs> San Diego that's overshadowing that? I, could not, I, can't put my, I can't put my finger on it. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. I mean, Josh Hader didn't give up a run the first two months of the season. It was like 17 appearances or something. Not a single run. Nothing. Do you think it's weird that uh, like the Brewers are still kind of complaining about it now? Like Eric Lauer said, it didn't send the right message. It's like, wouldn't you like (laughs) he said that today or yesterday? Wouldn't you look at what haters been doing and be like, thank God we got rid of that guy. (laughs) He probably never didn't check the the stats, dude. Yeah. But I mean, Taylor Rogers hasn't been doing well either. Yeah, that's that's just a that's that's just a ball player talking about, you know, the the culture and the vibe in a clubhouse. And yeah, to an extent, you'd like to think that, hey, look, man, great guy, wasn't performing well. 
in terms of why we're here, which is to win ball games. Yeah. Don't want to say that's an addition by subtraction, but he's not hurting us anymore. Like, can right. you see that? On uh, you're not on, as quick to identify that. On July 3rd, Josh Hader had a 105 ERA uh, and in the 15 appearances since then, 11 and two thirds, 20 hits, 19 runs, all of them earned, nine walks, Ooh. still has the 20 strikeouts, uh, but six homers. He's hit three he had- batters. Opponents are hitting 385 against him. Yeah. Uh, a 1293 OPS. The ERA is 1466. Uh, well, he had a he had and a couple blow ups. He had a couple blow ups back to back, like a couple bad games back to back. Didn't he? He had a game. Those games. He actually, gave up three earned to the Twins on the on July 13th. His well, next outing, he okay, gave so up was that six the, earned to the Giants. So so against the Twins. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think he logged an out. In that outing, he did and not. then the next outing, the next I think one, he only got one out. One out. Yes. So that is doing the math here. That's nine, nine runs, runs in a third in of one, an inning. Yeah, yeah. His that's ERA bad. went so, from two seventy three to four fifty four yeah. five <laughs> in one. So what game. I was going to say is that right there, those two outings together, that can happen at the beginning of the year for a reliever, and he could go on a three month scoreless streak. And still not want to look at the scoreboard when he comes into the ballgame. Yeah. He went from having a, a 182. And between that and the next out that he would record had a 450. He went from a 182 to a 450. And now he's at a 530. So that's because uh, two, two of his last three outings, he's given up three earned runs. And that last one, again, what kills you is when you don't fucking get him out. So he in two of his last three outings, he's given up six earned runs in two thirds of an inning. He got he got two outs against the Giants, three earned runs, and then uh, against the Nats, gave up three earned runs without recording an out. Just adding runs without adding outs. Not yeah, anymore. yeah, not great, not great at all. Um, but what is great is uh, Blue Moon. Oh, buddy. Because baseball and beer, they go hand in hand. And Blue Moon is the perfect stadium companion with its bold flavor, bright explosion of color, iconic orange slice ritual, and authentic ballpark roots. In fact, Blue Moon was born in a ballpark, first created at the Sandlot Brewery in Denver, Colorado. From the first pitch to extra innings, a Blue Moon guarantees a -a one-of-a-kind beer experience every single time. Had some Blue Moons this past weekend. Jake, how many Blue Moons did you have this past weekend? I think like 16. 16. That's a great total because it's also responsible when you divide it over three days. Uh, From its refreshing flavor with Valencia orange peel for a subtle sweetness and hints of coriander. Blue Moon Belgian White is one of a kind beer that's made brighter. It's carefully crafted and full flavored with refreshing notes and a smooth creamy finish. Why strike out with the same old beer when you can get something that's one of a kind? Best served with a signature orange garnish to showcase its beautiful hazy color. A beer this good only comes around once in a blue moon, but you can enjoy it all season long. Break out of your same old beer slump. Blue Moon Belgian White is one of a kind every time. Get Blue Moon Belgian White delivered by visiting get.bluemoonbeer.com slash rocket to see your delivery options. That is get.bluemoonbeer.com slash rocket. Blue Moon, made brighter, celebrate responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado Ale. Uh, there was a little uh, kerfluffle in the Bronx yesterday. There was a little oh, kerfluffle. A little dust up? And, well, I don't, even know, I don't even know if you can call it that. I think it was just like a little fuckery where Alec Manoa smoked Aaron Judge. My fucking friend, Aaron Judge, by the way. He fucking smoked him. And do I think it was on purpose? I do. Do I think it was the right decision? I do. You're, you're trying to send a message like, hey, we're the Toronto Blue Jays. We're coming for that ass. By the way, uh, going into that game on Sunday, the Blue Jays had cut nine and a half games off the Yankees divisional lead after their win on Saturday. So they were going for a four game sweep. They had their ace on the mound. One of their aces because Kevin Gosman's fucking nasty too. Uh, and Berrios has come back. Like he, he went from dog shit to the Cy Young pick that Dallas thought that he had. Um, So you have Manoa going in the finale and he's got Aaron Judge coming up and I believe at the time it was a two to one Yankee lead. Smokes him in the tricep guard 
And Judge is like looking out at him being like, all right, fuck you. Like, like, let me get the at bat here. And then fucking pussy ass Garrett Cole comes barking <laughs> over the, the dugout railing. But he's doing the hold me back. Like, he's like, oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. but he's not he's not going out there. He's going out there so that the fans see that he's like barking like he wants. He wants the fans to see that he's yelling. He wants the cameras to see that he's yelling, but he does not want any part of Alec Manoa because if you did, you would have went out no. a little bit further and then their confrontation really happens. So Garrett Cole's flapping his gums and Aaron Judge himself is looking over yeah, at the Yankee like, dugout being like, shut the fuck up. Like, get back in the <laughs> dugout, like whatever. Like, it was yeah. on purpose. I get it. But everyone, calm the fuck down. Like, get back in the dugout. He gets on first base. Manoa goes up to him and he's like, yeah, I didn't mean to do it. And Judge is like, yeah, whatever. I, like, yes, you did. But like, it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, but then Alec Manoa had some comments after the game. And Love this it. was, uh, it was, it was interesting because I think Judge handled it the right way. And Garrett Cole, the pussy that he is. You don't hear Manoa calling out Judge after the game. You hear him calling out pussy ass Garrett Cole. I've been struggling with my sinker for about five, six starts now. Uh, I made a pitch and uh, obviously hit Judge. And obviously uh, I looked at him and I said, man, you know, I'm not trying to do that. And I think he understood that. And um, I think if Garrett wants to do something, he can walk past the Audi side next time. No, calling him a straight Simple. up bitch. Simple. Straight up bitch. Simple. Hey, Garrett. To the point. Garrett, it's very, it's it's very a rod like. Like, remember how a rod when he would hit a double, he would like point at the outfielders because he wanted to let everyone know, like, I'm a smart baseball player, so I'm I'm letting you know that I'm noting like the depth of the outfielder, so that if if he's far back, then I'm gonna be like, okay, he's back, so that means that I can tag on like a deep fly ball, like I'm good, like positional wise, like he like baseball, every, every baseball player is doing the things in their mind, or most of them are that A Rod's doing, but he wants you to see that he's thinking out loud, so he's like, I am. Very smart yep. baseball IQ is high with me. <laughs> and that is a very similar cop to what Garrett Cole was doing is I want everyone to know that after yesterday, when I looked like shit again, I, I'm, the Yankees are one in five in my starts since the All-Star break. My ERA as a starter is almost five in those six starts since the All-Star break when we've been plummeting. So at least I can do is be a good teammate because I can't be a good pitcher. So let me go out and bark, but not too far. Not too far. I, I, I got my shot collar on, so I'm just going to bark in the yard, but I'm not going to hop the fence. I would never hop the fence. I can't disobey my master. So that's that's essentially what happened there. He's a fucking pussy. Well, what would you say to the people who said would arguing that he actually did hop the fence? He hopped the rail. Ooh. But the metaphorical <laughs> fence would be those oh, chalk lines. The Audi. Those okay. chalk yeah. lines. <laughs> the, the Audi sign is the yeah. metaphorical what, fence, what, right? Yes. We're yeah. doing metaphorical uh, fences, not real fences. <laughs> and I would argue it's a rail, not a fence. All right. Yeah. What about the people who say, wow, he really is sticking up for his guys and is the leader of the clubhouse? Yeah. I would you know, say take the counter to that is fix. very simple, Joe. And I just said it. Even Aaron Judge thought he was being a clown. Even Aaron Judge was like, shut the fuck up and get back in the dugout. See, like, see, it was not like live, some I'm sort of like team unifying moment where it was like Judge was like, yeah, man, you thanks for having my back, dog. He was like, shut up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Could you, could you see, imagine it, if he really did go out there and just laid him out, like <laughs> laid out Manoa and Judge is like, no, don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Garrett, yeah, the 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 huge overreaction, like the fucking water, like like the movie The Water Boy, <laughs> where his fucking <laughs> Vicky Valancourt is outside of the window while he's taking the test. Like, hey, you want me to kill him? You want me to kill the guy who's going to yeah. grade your test? Like, no, fuck. You could probably. You don't have to do that. Just pump the brakes a little. Yeah, Garrett Cole comes flying out of nowhere, just elbows Alec Manoa, knocks him stiff, and Aaron Judge is just standing there, like, dude, this was not how this needed to go at all at all the only problem is i don't have garrett cole elbowing alec manoa i have garrett cole doing exactly what he did i have garrett cole getting out to a certain point where you could start to feel the space between you and some of the other folks who might be intervening and you're like i think we've i think we're at 
I think we're at the brink. This is probably the edge. And I'm going to start making my way back now. This is this is far enough. If we lived in the world that I'm trying to create for baseball fans, where that 30-second clock started, as soon as Garrett Cole got to that Audi sign, now, now let's go ahead and throw in a, a little force field that forces the players into a like octagon. Can't leave. Now, now you just can't leave. And now you got to mm. fucking deal with this 30 seconds. Because like Alec Manoa is like, look, dude, it was all good. Like it was an accident. Hold on. Whoa, what's coming? Now you want to? Oh, okay. Well, I got a free 30 seconds to kick the fuck out of you right now <laughs> for absolutely no reason. This didn't have to happen. This did not Manoa's have to happen. about that life. Like you can here. tell. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If, absolutely. I think if absolutely. there's no Don't. way. Because there's two things that you need to note about what Alec Manoa said. One. He's about that life. You don't say that. You're not inviting someone to do that unless you're confident in your ability to beat their ass. And two, he knows that Garrett Cole won't. He knows he will not do that. Uh, it's well, not I, like, I, I, like in hockey. In hockey, we've seen the rare goalie versus goalie fight where they'll just meet yeah. at center ice and beat the bag out of each other. It's rare, but it's happened. How many times have we seen... Uh, a Starting pitcher pitchers. throw at a batter, but then we get a fight between two pitchers. Never. No, Never. Not at me. The only time that that almost fucking happened in my memory was when uh, Arroyo hit uh, Arroyo hit A-Rod and then Schilling crutched his old ass out of the dugout and tried oh. to come for Alex. That's the only time I've really seen like a pitcher who wasn't involved in, in the on-field aspect of it try and get involved in in the fight aspect of it uh but yeah no that that fight ain't happening and judge basing based off of judge's comments and his body language he doesn't he doesn't want to fight alec minoa and it's not because he doesn't think he can take him it's because it's yeah no. whatever who fucking cares? It's part it's of the game because it was a nothing situation it was nothing yeah. that's why like judge <laughs> jared cole no. was overcompensating for failing did you see the, the video that I tweeted? I mean, obviously it was a fake lip reading, but what he really said was, fuck, come on, Garrett, do your job. Like he said that. <laughs> he said that. He talked to himself out loud in the third person and he said, come on, Garrett, do your job. So like that was the next day. You suck so bad. Your team is sliding. You're the highest paid pitcher in baseball history. You're not performing well at all during the stretch in which they are sliding. You just pitched yesterday and sucked. And now like you're overcompensating for all that by being the first person out of the dugout because Aaron Judge got hit. And Judge is like, dude, fucking calm down. Like if 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 Garrett Cole goes seven shutout with 10 strikeouts the day before, he's not on the field in that incident. He's not. He's not. Yeah. <laughs> if Garrett Cole has yeah. like a one seven four over the six starts that he has a five when the Yankees have the worst fucking record in the league, he's not over the rail. He's probably in the dugout still. You know, you don't give a fuck like that was total. Just like shrimp dick overcompensation was what that was. Well, I have a hypothetical for you. We, we agree that it was a little bit of an overreaction and it didn't have to go there. But because no one else was the, out there. Who the fuck else? Exactly. Did you see? Did you see Glaber out there? No, no, but it didn't need to happen. But if he took it, if he took it even further, went out there and did give Manoa an elbow, what would you say then? Would you respect that more or would you shit on him more? I, I don't know that I would shit on him more, but I'd be like, what are you doing? Like, I would be like, I would have secondhand embarrassment. Because I, my my reaction would be the same, but more. Well, dude, I I'd have, be like, I had strong second I would say, embarrassment watching I, him. Yeah, like I would say, you're so insecure about your own performance that you just assaulted a guy <laughs> to to show your allegiance to the team, and like I can't contribute hey, as a pitcher, so I'm just gonna fight the guy that's pitching against you guys. Hey, I want you. Willing to He's willing to catch a body for the club. And you know what? That's maybe that's a lot more than than that can be said for some other folks. Yeah. If Donaldson wasn't out there, then yeah, you shouldn't point. be out there. Well, well, it's it's just great because you you see Coley like it's that moment. Like I said, you start to feel the space between you and everybody else. And you ran out there and in your head, like going over the rail, you're like, this is the, this is the right thing. This is a good idea. This is a good idea. And then you get out there and you like, look around. You're like, Oh, uh, looks like I am. The only, I'm going to 
I'm going to take it back a little. I'm going to go ahead and back this up. Sorry about that. Sorry about interrupting, guys. You just keep that. I, I, I think I read that wrong. That's on me. Yeah. Hand up. I read that wrong. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah, like it was mind. like being at like a fucking, it was like being at a first communion and someone bumps into you by an accident and he just smashes a glass beer bottle and wants to cut someone's throat. Everyone's like, whoa, not that kind of vibe. <laughs> it's just not that kind of party, dude. Like, chill the fuck out. No one else like that. So that you- is the barometer. Is Josh Donaldson out there ready to fucking crack skulls? No. <laughs> then maybe hop back over there with your fucking pancake ass, Garrett. He's <laughs> oh. trying to fire up the boys, bro. You think that was Fail. his thinking? It's like we're on we're on a we're on a cold streak. This is we can if we get in a fight right now, we could turn it around. Yeah, I mean, but they needed they needed a fucking Red Sox player to to turn around. If it's not for Andrew Benintendi, who hit his like second home run of the year then where, where are they? They probably lose that game. They get f- swept in four games. Aaron Boone is... By the way, can, can my guy Aaron Boone get some goddamn help around here? Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, the man, the man is... Uh, I, I think w- w- the biggest criticism that Aaron Boone gets is, like, he's too, like, friendly with the players. So when, he has, when it comes time to fire up the boys, like, he's, he's the perfect manager for when things are going well. But when things are going wrong, he can't fire up the boys because he's just too close to them. I don't see that as a problem. I don't see it like be a manager being too close to the team. Like, fine. Like, that means that they have a good relationship. That means, like, he's, he's the captain of the ship and they trust him and, and he trusts his players. So when he has to go out there and slam on a goddamn table after a game, I mean, they respond with a win. Sure. Like the people like the he had the, the great quote about like, you know, did you hear the, the fire boon chance? And he was like, yeah, that's why I stepped up on the top step of the dugout so they, they could see me better. Like, you don't give a fuck about your fire boon chance. Dallas, you're uh, you're getting a you're getting a sleeve tattoo today. That's why you get a bounce. Starting it. Starting mm. it. The inception mm, okay. of. OK. The beginning. You, yeah. You're going to get something for me. Got a little sesh. Uh, are you gonna? Are you gonna get I something gotta, for me? Yeah, I got. Well, I, I I already have it. I've been waiting to show you. I got a little dot on my shaft, and then when it gets hard, it says <laughs> the Saugus rocket. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so I'll show you that next time. Yeah, you should show that to the <laughs> cops to get out of a out of a a little pinch <laughs> next time. I've also I've got a squirrel tattooed on my inner thigh, with his hands like this. It's great. Yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> All right. Enjoy uh-huh. that. All right, gentlemen. We'll see you Boy. next week. Yeah, okay. Hey, Al. Bye, Dallas. Bye, Jared. Hope <laughs> you find your dad. Uh um so Joey, you uh is my take off? Do you do you agree? Do you disagree? How do you feel about that? No, I think I think pretty much the problem with the <laughs> I think your take basically is, and I think you've been consistent with this take and um since the get go is that your biggest problem with Garrett Cole is he's cringe. Yeah. He's 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 not authentic. Like there there he's, is like he stinks of A Rod. Like you're you're great, you're a great player. You're great at what you do, but there's no authenticity there. Like you are, uh, you're trying to say the right thing, but it's like, it's, it's like when the good guy wrestler comes out in the hometown and like they're saying all this like cringe shit to cater to the crowd. Like that's Garrett Cole. And then it's, it's cringe and uncomfortable. Like when things don't go your way. Like the like the spider tack thing, he gets asked in the press conference point blank, um, "Have you ever used spider tack?" And he's like, "Uh, I don't know how to answer that." <laughs> it's a yes or no question, Garrett. Uh, have you have you have you used it? Yes or no? And and he just like gets caught with his pants down and looks like a doofus. Um, and then him crying in front of the media, being like, "You know, for Pete's sake." Like you just just work with us here. Come on. Like, you know, we're we're just we're trying to cheat out here. Can you at least work with us? You really have to take it all away? Like that's like really? 
Like not only are you the highest paid player and in, in, in pitcher in Major League Baseball, but now you're crying to the media telling the league to work with you because you got caught cheating and and you want help with that. Like he has no sense of self awareness at all, uh, and this is like so. The last time the Yankees were in town, uh, I was over by the Yankee dugout, and I was waiting for Ben Attendee to finish batting practice, and I was going to say hi to him because it was his first time like at Fenway. I think I, I didn't see him when he was here with the Royals, uh, so I hadn't seen him since February, and so I'm waiting for him to come back. And Garrett Cole is by the Yankee dugout as well, and like some Yankee fan is tweeting at me. Being like, you're a pussy. Like, I can see that you're three feet away from Garrett Cole. Like, you won't say any of th- these things to his face. That would be such weirdo behavior. I think he was talking to David Cohn. Like, such... Or, or yeah, it was someone like that. Uh, weirdo behavior to go up to him, interrupt his conversation with someone, and be like, here's why I hate you. But if it ever got back to him, which I'm sure that it has, I'm sure he's well aware... That because like people people have like have tweeted that to me too. They've been like, "Oh, do you think he even knows who you are? Like you 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 think that he like he even knows what you say?" Yes, I do, I do, <laughs> uh, I do. So if he were to ever come up to me and be like, "Hey, like what's your deal? Like what's your problem?" Be like, I I don't like you, and here's why. I would have no problem saying any of that. But I think it's whoa, fucking whoa. weirdo behavior to go up to him first and introduce that topic and then just berate him when he's just like on the field like doing his job but if it ever was an issue with him to the point where he wanted to come up to me and be like what's your what's your problem with me be like here's my problem with you like i i think that you're a phony and and here are plenty of examples to justify that and i'm sure people be like oh well if he was on your team if he was on your team you wouldn't feel that way yeah i would there's been plenty of people on the red Sox that i just straight up did not like and never pretended to like because they were on my team. Like back in like 2015, I was blocked by like a third of the roster. I was like, I fucking hate these guys. And I, I did not pretend to like them. I got Pablo Sandoval suspended. That was me. The blood was on my hands. I don't give a fuck if you're when on my team suspended? or not. What did he get suspended for? For being fat? No, because he was liking pictures um, of titty pics on Instagram during the game in Atlanta. It, they were playing the Braves. Oh. Yeah. I, I, I saw he was that. liking pictures of titties. During the game, and I screenshotted it and tweeted it, and I was like, uh, I think Pablo Sandoval is on Instagram right now. Suspended. <laughs> Got suspended. Because it's a gambling issue. If you're a player, you can't be on your phone during the games because you could be like, yeah, I'm coming out of the game. So, like, bet, so you know, you bet guys, the other team. Have you, ever felt, have you ever felt nervous around a player because you said some shit about them or ever no. been confronted in any way? No, I get giddy. Yeah, no. I, but because, you never... I've never said anything about a player that I didn't feel super strongly about. So if Garrett Cole had that at, had an issue with me and wanted to confront me about everything that I just said on this episode, <clears throat> I would repeat it. I would expand on it if he didn't understand what I was saying. I would give him examples for why I feel the way that I do. You know, it, it is what it is. And I've, I've felt that way about other players. Like there's there have been other guys that I didn't like that weren't. It has nothing to do with like Yankees or not. Uh, him being on the Yankees, obviously, like you play it up because of the, the rivalry aspect of it. But if he was if he was on the Dodgers, if he was on the Reds, you'd be like, yeah, like this guy's just a fucking phony. It's just, he's just more in focus because he's a on the Yankees and B on a team that uh, is in contention for a World Series every year. Like it's. That is what it is. Well, what if he came up to you and just was like, hey, or introduced himself or pretended or doesn't know who you are? Mm-hmm. What would you say then? Uh, I would do the same thing that I did to John Heyman that same day. <laughs> like I was over by the Red Sox dugout. And I'm, I mean, like John Heyman, uh, he may just know like the name or like the, the avatar on Twitter, but like he's tweeted at or about me before. Uh, I saw him at BP. And I, it was one of those things where like you make eye contact and I, I might have either thought that he was someone else, but like we made eye contact and I was like, hey, how's it going? He's like, good, good. How are you? So like he's definitely like talked shit on Twitter before, but like if, if I see you in person, like I'm not going to be like, oh, oh, I can't, I can't talk to this guy. Like what are you going to do? Is he going to attack me? I, I want to know if, if Garrett Cole met you. Or you're mm-hmm. in a group of people who you know, and then Garrett Cole's there, and he's like being nice to you, and like I don't hey. think he would like. I I think if he were if he were to be nice to me as an open, 
then I would lightheartedly still let him know how I feel. Like if he came up to me and he was like, hey man, like nice to meet you. I'm Garrett. I'd be like, I'm Jared. I really don't like you. Like I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, w- I wouldn't be fake with a guy that I genuinely don't like. I would not do that. So it's not about, uh, you know, being like a tough guy and just fucking running up to a player and being like, hey man, fuck you. And then like, dude, you're on the field with, with press passes. Like you can't do that. <laughs> Like that's like against the rules. You're, that's harassment. Yeah. You're not going to you harass imagine, somebody. But can you imagine that if Garrett Cole, if you said some shit, he got you banned. He got your press pass taken away, banned from Fenway. Can you imagine? I don't the think war? he could do that. I don't think he has that power. Oh, well, I'm just saying hypothetically. Yeah, that'd like if awesome. anything, the Red Sox would be like, "Hey, next time the Yankees are in town, stay on this side. <laughs> like, don't go over there." I'm like, all right, that's fine. But. Yeah, I mean, like that, the whole reason, my, one of my whole big pitches to the Red Sox originally back in 2018 um, to get credentialed because originally they would never, they were like, oh yeah, we can't credential you because you're, you're like, they changed the rules for me there. Like the, the whole online only was created because I, in 2018, Dallas got me press passes in Oakland when Shaw Mania threw the no hitter against the Red Sox. Then I came back. And I was like, hey, why will the Oakland A's credential me, but the Red Sox won't? Like, don't you see the issue here? And then, like, we got started talking. They were, what do you want them for? And I was like, well, at the time I was doing NBC Sports Boston, I was doing TV. Section 10 was big and starting nine was big. So I was like, how am I going to like criticize players? And then it's a bad look on me that I'm not there for them to, like, if if they want to have a conversation, I, I can't hold myself accountable. Like, I was like, no offense to the people that you do give credentials to, but I don't think that anyone up there that covers the Red Sox has a bigger Red Sox audience than I do. And I can't stand out here if someone has an issue with something that I said and face them. So like accountability was like the, the leading reason why I asked the team for press passes. I was like, I don't want to go in the clubhouse. I don't want to go in the press box. I'm not going to go in the media room, but I just want to be out there for batting practice. Like if, if someone sees me and they're like, hey, fuck you for saying that. It's like, yeah, all right. Let's say fuck you to me. I'll, I'll, I'm standing here. So that was part of it. Same applies to Garrett Cole. If he and there, I don't I can't say for 100 percent certainty that he knows like some of the things I've said. I'm pretty sure he does. And there's a reason why he probably hasn't ever come up to me and been like, fuck you. Like because he knows that I'm right. Like, what are you going to say? <laughs> what are you going to say? Like. Probably got some. He got some rebuttals. I don't hey, think man. so. Not for. I, hey, I think man. everything that Look I've come after him for has been 100. percent Like you can't, you can't deny it. Like you, yes, you use spire tech. Like, what you, I, whatever it is, what it is, and you, you got caught with your pants say, down. You look cringe. like an idiot. No, he's cringe. I'm not, I'm not dumb. I'm fun. I'm a fun guy. People like me. I'm very I'm funny. Dude. Yeah, that's what we need, man. You need to get the fucking. And this is for you too, Jake, because I know you go to the games with Jared, but a fucking video just doesn't know. It doesn't even need sound, but like I need a video from like Jake in the upper decks of Fenway from the green monster and just zooming in and it's Jared talking to Garrett Cole. <laughs> like, what I, are they talking I would about? have the conversation. I just don't like, I'm, I, I don't would. think that my approval or like mending the fence with me is of any importance whatsoever to, to him. And that's fine. Like I, that's whatever. I, I clearly. Yeah, because I just don't. I don't think he's going to come on the podcast. So I think we need to plan <laughs> an ambush. So one way or another. Yeah, and it's I, really uh, up to you two guys in Boston to figure this out. We'll, we ambush. tried at the we tried at the All Star game when we were on the red carpet. He went out of his. That's why I was like, oh, he definitely knows because he was on our side of the guardrail, and then right before he got to me, he went to the other side of the guardrail. So that's why you know that confrontation or conversation was about to happen. I was in place. I'm not, I didn't run away from the guardrail because I was like, oh, Garrett Cole's next. Oh, I got to get out of here. <laughs> no, I stood there and then he, he chose to go to the other side and that's fine. Like he's under no obligation to acknowledge or speak to me or have this conversation. But I don't know that there's anything that he could say that would make me be like, you know what? I kind of like this guy. I just don't. I don't. I don't like what he stands for. I don't. He just. He just I think one day he'll be on the Red Sox and. <laughs> yeah. And then. Uh, I think Aaron Judge. You'll probably still hate Sox. him, but you'll be a little nicer. No, I think. I think. What I think. You know what? 
I can't wait to get an Aaron Judge Red Sox jersey, dude. <laughs> I just wonder if Verdugo will give up 99. Do you think he will, Jake? Nah, I think Judge got to get a new number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, I mean, now I'm all like fired up. I, I got to... I got to chill out with some CBDMD. Thanks. Yeah. And we got a new sponsor. You guys already know it's a late season call up. CBDMD, the leaders in hemp based CBD and Delta 9 THC products. These guys have everything you could possibly need to straight up feel better. And their latest breakthrough is Delta 9 THC. These sneaky innovators found a way to get these Delta 9 THC products shipped directly to your door. Now, some restrictions may apply because of course they do. So check your local laws before purchasing. But I'm telling you, this stuff is the real deal. They've got gummies packed with 10 milligrams of THC. Perfect for winding down after watching the Red Sox blow yet another lead. If 10 milligrams sounds like a lot to you, then CBDMD has you covered with their microdose soft gels with just one milligram of THC. These little guys pack a punch that is perfect for all day support whenever and wherever you need it the most. Don't get caught up and all the technicalities. This is the same THC that you've come to know and love over the years, just extracted from hemp. After we're done doing this podcast, I'm probably going to have one of the 10 milligrams. I am a big fan of those. Shout out to CBDMD for the care package. I will be purchasing them on my own when I run out of the freebies. And for you, to learn more about Delta 9 and everything else CBDMD has to offer, just head to CBDMD.com. Once again, that is CBDMD dot com for information education and the best damn gummies that you've ever had you must be 21 years or older to purchase delta nine um albert pools is a man on a mission he's not just it's not like he's uh just hitting homers he's hitting everything in the second half of the season and i don't think that this is a overreaction but albert pools has been one of the best hitters in baseball <laughs> since the second half of the season started. That, He's been the best. Fair or unfair? He's been the best. I, I was checking the stats and I can tell you he's been the best. July 23rd was when he got his first at-bat in the second half of the season. He's had 54 plate appearances. He's 22 for 49, eight runs scored, three doubles, seven homers. He's driven in 17 runs in 18 games. He's hitting 449 with a 500 on base percentage. He's slugging 939 for a 1439 OPS. He's he also 53 he years break, old. <laughs> he, since the also break, he leads the league in WRC plus. Does he really? He doesn't He's qualify though, right? One. It's like a, you have to like set no. it to a minimum amount. He's got 50 at bats. If the only person with more than him has one at bat. Damn, dude. And you know what's fucking even crazier? What's crazy? The whole season? Yeah. Against lefties? Yeah. He's third in WRC plus against lefties at any player. The whole For season. the whole season? Yes. Jeez. I mean, Albert Pujols, uh, what is he? He's at 692? He needs eight more? Yeah. I, don't know. I thought it was like 11. No. But that was a week ago. He keeps changing every day because he keeps fucking hitting them. So, I think yeah, that sounds right though. Eight. Yeah, he's got eight he's more. He's going to have to go. He's going to have to go sicko mode. He's going to have to stay in sicko mode to do it. I mean, he's hit seven homers in 18 games. And he's only started 12 of those games. So, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's like a a shoe in that he's going to do it based on. I mean, he's going to have to keep this production going, uh, which seems like a, a, a big ask, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible. Oh. And I think I think what's really going to what's going to hurt my soul is if he gets to like 698 because he already said he's been asked, hey. If you get to like 698, 699, will you come back next year? And he was like, nope. No way. Nope. Doesn't matter how close he gets. This is it. He's either doing it this year or he's not doing it. Um, I know some people were like, we just want him to pass A-Rod. He has a fuck. Either, you're, either you're in the 700 club or not. 
And this right is, now, you know, this is his first time be having a war, a positive war since 2017. <laughs> I would have guessed further back, honestly. Really? Yeah. I mean, po- just having zero war would allow you to avoid that. He's been worse than a replacement player since 2017. That's really fucking bad. And I know this is a segment where we're supposed to tell you he's good because <laughs> he is good. He's actually one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. And he's the best hitter in the league at the moment. Do you think he gets in on the but first ballot? But he's actually first ballot Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. Do I think he is? Mm-hmm. 50-50 chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He might not even make it in. Wait, are you looking at fan graphs or baseball reference? Fan graphs. Okay, yeah. Because he on baseball reference, he had a 0.1 war last year. Oh, dude, you're watching a baseball references for no, 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 no. I, I was only on I was only on baseball reference uh, to see the all time home run list. So he has six nine yeah, eight two. I'm, I'm F four. I'm F four. Yeah, I'm I'm F four too. I'm Team F four. A Rod is at six ninety six, and he's retired, which means that that's going to stay at six ninety six for those keeping score at home. A Rod does not play baseball anymore, so he's four away from A Rod. He's not going to catch Babe Ruth, who murdered his wife, allegedly, at 714. <laughs> also, I guess what else he did? What did he do? He took steroids. Did he? he? He injected cheap testosterone into his arm. Did he really? And yes, and it made him sick and he had to miss a game. That with honestly, what year did that happen? Because like, maybe that messed with his brain and that's why he killed his wife. Probably. I'm trying to give him an out. I don't know. Google, Google. I don't know if I found a year, but I found that online. On the internet, you said? Online. online. I saw that. Well, it was in a book originally, but then someone wrote. Put it on AOL. Took the book and put it online. Mm-hmm. So, Babe Ruth did take steroids, but he's still one of the greatest, I think. He wasn't. But... <laughs> He's pretty good though, because look at his numbers. Babe Ruth. Yeah, man, I kind of, I kind of get mad every time you shit on Babe Ruth. Like, I get it, he isn't facing the good guys, but no one was facing the good guys. Look at his fucking stats; it makes it's like insane. Mm. Babe also, Ruth is insane. No, he sucked. Uh, there was a there was a time period where, obviously, we can't go back and look at it now. But ground rule doubles—they just counted as home runs. Okay, well, that happened like. F- there's no way Babe Ruth, that counts for like three home runs of his. Maybe. No, I doubt it. It could be half. It, <laughs> it could. We don't know. It's not half. It's not half. We Dude, don't he's know. Hitting bombs. Jake, do we know? No, I think it might be like 90%. It could be 90%. Maybe. We have no we idea. We could find out. We could find out. No, we couldn't. There's no footage. Like There's most of Babe Ruth's of- career was probably made up. Probably. The fastest you, fastball that Babe Ruth threw was probably an average high school fastball right now. Yeah, but hey, man, he's from, he was born and raised in Baltimore and he made the league. Mm-hmm. That's impressive. And um, That's impressive. That's what I always say. Well, it's like, well, Mike Trout, he was facing fucking carpenters. It's like, well, mm-hmm. Mike Trout wasn't born in Baltimore. Right. I just watched uh, your new YouTube video. That came out last night, yesterday. Yeah. I mean, it's basically just about how like baseball is going to kill everybody. (laughs) It's a lot of people getting hit in the face Mm -hmm. in that video. YouTube tried to fucking censor me and not let me post that with and demonetize me, but I got it out monetized. So, yeah, man, there's a lot of injuries in baseball and it's it's concerning for the league. A lot of player, a lot of teams are faking injuries. Yeah, I saw that. Someone, someone got threatened. You were gonna release you unless you accept this fake injury. Yeah. Also, uh, what was it that like in the last year, more pitchers have gotten Tommy John surgery than the entire decade of the eighties? Yeah. That's pretty eye opening. Mm-hmm. They probably just like back in the eighties. They were like Tommy, what surgery? Nah. I ain't yeah. no pussy. I'm going to go out there with my frayed tendons and just chuck a ball up there. I don't give a shit. Well, Tommy John, I think, was invented in like 1974 or something. Like, it started in the 70s. So I think it was. Yeah, 80s. I think you're right. 
I think there's a lot of players in the 80s who just retired and never got it. But if you, but it's still crazy. I mean, it, it's close. I, I Originally, it was the 90s, but the 90s just broke it. Because in the second half of the 90s, when everyone started getting it, like, not everyone, but, like, the amount of people getting Tommy John now is, like, fucking, I don't know. Yeah. 600, 700% higher. Sure. And I think probably in the 80s, too, that the percentage who needed it was probably similar. But no, the no, percentage that today, dude, got it is lower because they probably just like didn't trust it. I mean, imagine, imagine like being around during the time period where Tommy John surgery was relatively new and a doctor is telling you, hey, uh, we need to take a ligament out of your fucking leg and then put it in your elbow. Imagine being an athlete. Being like, well, what happens to my leg then? Like, I, I need to walk. Like, what if, like, when I'm pitching, I have to, like, drive off that leg. Like, now my leg is going to be weaker, but, like, I'm going to have a stronger elbow. Like, thinking about after retirement, like, it's still, it's like, think about all the people with, like, the, the COVID vaccine where it's like, oh, yeah, like, you know, it, we have, like, a one or two year sample size of what happens to you. But, like, what happens 20 years from now? Like, what's going to happen? Same thing with, like... <laughs> You're going to take a ligament out of my leg and put it in my elbow. What happens to my ability to walk when I'm 60? Like, is it much less because I don't have that ligament in my leg? Like, I could understand in the early 80s, late 70s, why guys would be like, uh, no, dude, you're not fucking just playing uh <laughs> operation with with my body like that's just they're like no trust me trust me look we did it to this deer the deer runs still <laughs> yeah, the squirrel we good, just dude. did it to yeah. we, did th- we did three humans so far it'd be the fourth you're gonna be throwing gas <laughs> you're gonna be throwing cheddar you know and that's probably why tatis <laughs> never got the shoulder surgery he was supposed to yeah i mean he didn't trust the science and can you blame him i definitely think i've never had this your- thought before this is not like a take that i've rehashed uh this is a fresh take i've n- i totally get why people would have not wanted tommy john surgery when it was when it was new like that like saying the concept out of it out loud is fucking crazy i'm pretty and i'm so i'm pretty sure there's like it was like one doctor who would do it and everyone else was like no we don't even know how we yeah. don't trust this shit and it was one guy being like nah nah i'm the goat I saved Tommy. Look at Tommy John. Yeah, it was like Dr. James Andrews. And then it was, uh, what is his name? Like Alcatraz. It's, it's like, it's like Alcatraz, but not like there's like two dudes that are mostly known for it. Uh, and I'm pretty sure like the first like 10 people, like one of them worked. Like I think Tommy John was like the only one for like a lot of, long time that actually was successful. Everyone else like never made it back. They all died. They all, yeah, they all die on the table. <laughs> and that's just part of being a major leaguer. But <laughs> the point of the video is that more people are dying today than ever before. Yeah. Because of baseball. More it's dangerous than ever, which is actually true. Some kid did die from Tommy John last year. Really? Yeah. What? A college pitcher. How? Yeah. He had like, it was a complication. He had like a blood clot, I think. Oh, so. And it killed him. Okay. That's different. I mean, that's still sad. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Uh, speaking of pitchers dying, did you see this? Fucking Bill Lee news. So Bill Lee uh, was pitching, was going to pitch for the Savannah Bananas. Uh, what night was that? It was over. It was over the weekend. Maybe it was Friday. Uh, it was Friday. Okay. So Friday night, Bill Lee um, was like warming up in the bullpen, and then he collapsed. And then the players on both teams like got down on one knee. And everyone was like super scared, but they didn't say anything about it. Like we didn't know like what the fuck happened. And then he walked off on his own power. So, I mean, Savannah, Georgia, like, you know, people were like, oh, maybe it was just hot and he fainted or something. No. So I I got this text message from someone in the know over there. Uh, They texted me and said, "Um, Bill Lee was dead for two minutes, like completely no pulse. And then apparently when he woke up, he said, I'm not dying in the bullpen. I'm going to die on the mound. And they took him to the hospital. And then in the hospital, he kept getting out of bed pretending to pitch because he wanted to go pitch in the game. He's a fucking 
legend. <laughs> Billy is just crazy. Sick. He's crazy. Cool. He loves baseball more than anyone, I think, in the world. Like he, I have a, I have a voicemail from Billy on my phone. From like 2011, and I refuse to delete it just because it's fucking Billy. Like I won't, I won't ever delete the voicemail. Uh, but he, he's just. I, I don't think that there's a more diehard baseball guy to ever exist than Bill the Spaceman Lee. Uh, I like. I don't know if it's out yet, but I, weren't they making like a biopic about uh, Billy? I don't know. They they were making a movie about his life. Let me see. I don't but know. that just sounds like a Savannah's Bananas bit. Like they're like, yo, we just this guy died. He's coming back next week. Ooh, all, they're all fun and games. Someone dies in the field, and then they just keep playing the game. The fuck? I don't know if they continue playing the game. Mm. Also, I don't know why. You, are you the only one who knows this? What? It sounds like you're the only one who knows that this happened. Because I've not heard. This sounds like it would be no semi big. I definitely when when he collapsed in the bullpen, I was seeing tweets that like, "Hey, Bill Lee, like fainted in the bullpen, like he was supposed to come into the game, and that he walked off on his own power." Like that's what was out there. Like that. So that, he just yeah. No, I didn't. Then. I didn't see like it. I mean, it sounds like it was a heart attack. Obviously. But so so Bill Lee died in the bullpen, and then two minutes later they're twerking on the field. <laughs> but he didn't die. He came back for two minutes. The guy, Jared, don't <laughs> don't diminish the feat that Bill Lee did. The guy fucking died. Dude, he did, and he's back. But he's back. And that's the one. I won't say anything about the Red Sox being back. I will say Bill Lee is back. Bill Lee is back. Baby. Bill Lee's back. And uh, obviously, we hope that there's no further complications and that he's back on a mound soon. I mean, that's where he wants to be. Fucking guy had a heart attack, apparently, and was ready to go out there and slam the door in the ninth an hour later. I always feel uncomfortable watching that because I did watch him a clip of him pitching with the bananas. And he's like 70, 80 years old, like throwing, throwing good. But also, it's like, dude, there could just one comebacker. I mean... This guy's in danger. He'd probably catch it. He's a gangster like that. And even if even if he got hit, he'd die and he'd just come back. So Yeah. He's You're like right. Ric Flair. Really he's much. he's the Ric Flair of Major League Baseball. He just always kicks out <laughs> at two. Always kicking out at two. Billy. I want to get him on the fucking podcast now. I so I interviewed Billy in two thousand nine or ten, maybe somewhere around there, and it was a phoner. And we're just talking. I've interviewed him a couple times. I interviewed him at the cask in like twenty eleven or twelve. I can't remember. Um, but the time that I interviewed him for the first time, we're just bullshitting, talking baseball, and then all of a sudden he was just like, "Oh my god! Like look at that squirrel. There, there's a. I'm looking out my window right now." And there is a big ass squirrel on the fence right now. I like this guy is huge. And I'm like, tell me more about the squirrel. We just like pivot the whole conversation to the squirrel. And he's giving me play by play. And he's like, my God, like this thing (laughs) is a big ass. I'm going to see if I can find that. I bet you it's out there somewhere. Uh, uh, Well, if anyone listening doesn't know who Bill Lee is, I'm sure there's a lot. No, but he's known. F- I'm. Yeah, I bet there is, dude. I bet a lot of people don't know what Bill Lee is no. known for, and I believe what is mostly known for is being a good pitcher who smoked a lot of fucking weed and got expelled and bla- blackballed. He got blackballed, yeah, for smoking Kush. And this is like the seventies, sixties, seventies, yeah. Like I think this he had, like, is back, guy back, back when back. smoking weed was fucking kind of cool. It was yeah. cool back then. Now it's you know. Back then, it was like... Now, it's like only Dallas. Dallas is the only guy who smokes weed and still thinks it's cool. But, like, (laughs) back then, it was cool. This guy's, like, the original Braden. Yeah. Back then, it was like, if if you smoked weed, it was looked at the same way that we view people that smoke meth. They're just like, wait, you do what? Like, what was it? Um, uh, Like, 
even as recently as like the late nineties, like if someone, if someone like got like arrested or like did something illegal, they'd be like, and they found traces of marijuana in his system. <laughs> it's like, what? Dude, he was a fucking Michael Phelps. Remember when yeah. the guy got caught smoking weed? It was like, yeah, you can't, you can't have a sponsorship anymore. Yeah. You're a bad person. We yeah. Thought you, you, we thought you were clean. We thought you were a, a role model. Turns out you're a fucking junkie. <laughs> Yeah, dude. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's tough to to lose one of your heroes like that. Taken down by that that dirty green. You that's know what? That's why I never done it. Yeah, stay off the weed, bro. Stay off the weed. Uh Jake, is there anything that we missed? Um, I think we covered everything pretty well. Yeah, I feel like this is a great pod. I feel like the culture is going to love it. <laughs> I feel like baseball society is going to love it. They're going to be like, oh, man, you hear that new baseball is dead where they talked about Garrett Cole being a pussy for like 20 minutes. <laughs> 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 yeah. Where else are you going to get um, the, the psyche of a major league pitcher broken down and also a marijuana PSA? And some sex education you you if you start doing sex at a major league game you're looking at six months dude six months is a long time it's half a year that's if you're that's if you're lucky man you might get life you might get life depending on what state you're in if you're out in california now you know six months is what you're facing if you're if you're doing sex out there so stay safe um I mean, if you're going to pick a ballpark, I would pick the Coliseum <clears throat> because uh, it's always empty. And I would say that like the furthest seat from home plate is the furthest in Oakland than it is in any other ballpark. So you're always going to get that grainy, shitty Dallas Braden quality video. So maybe keep doing it. I don't know. Maybe maybe they're just like serial fuckers. Maybe they're just like, we're going to keep doing this until we get caught by the law. Oh, yeah. They're fucking right now, those two. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> they saw that article. Fuck, man. They're like, they're and on. They just started going at it. What else can we do? We, we're all we got. Yeah. Good for them. Good for them. Love wins. Good for them. As always. Um, we'll be back on Thursday, Jake. Thursday. Jake's takes, do you have any thoughts? Nah, man, I'm going to let this pod speak for itself. I mean, it was just a hell of an episode. <laughs> if I was a listener, which I am, I'm going to just listen to it on repeat, I think, until the next one drops on Thursday. This is a pretty good episode. <laughs> I'd say it's, it's one of our best. Um, so thank you for listening. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. You got friends that are baseball fans? Be like, hey, uh, guys over at uh, Baseball is Dead, they do a really good show, and you uh, you would really appreciate it. Check us out on YouTube. We're there as well. If uh, if you're not commuting and and listening on Spotify or iTunes, wherever you get your podcasts, if you'd rather look at our beautiful faces, you can do that on YouTube as well. And uh, we hope you enjoy the week of baseball and we'll be back on Thursday. We go.